Welcome to TT Boy TV. Today we have a cool guy, a veteran of I think 21 years at least. Almost right? 23 now. 23, wow. And um, yeah, I really want to know about what you your career. You know, please welcome the gentleman porn star. He's a gentleman and a nice guy. All of it, John Strong. Thank you. How you been? Been great. Thanks. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I've been good. Awesome. I mean, I'm in retirement, so I'm kind of young to retire, but yeah, I'm good. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, the first question really is, how did you get that name, John Strong? Um, you know, when I, on my first set, they asked me, do you have a stage name? And I said, well, I don't really know what to pick. And uh, they said, well, you look strong because I used to do Olympic lifting way Whoa, back. Really? And they said, well, how about something strong, like John Strong? I said, John Strong sounds good. Let's, let's go with that. That's how I got it. Well, that's cool. So, yeah, I mean, I like the name. It's cool. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but just real quick, because I don't want to get off the beaten path of porno, but you were Olympic lifter for competition? Yes. yes. Competitor? Yes. Did you win any big yeah. competitions? Yes, I took a second in Pan American Games, and I took eighth in Junior Worlds. Wow, and that's what? So this is um, bench, military, and which ones? Uh, the Pan American Games. No, no, the oh. um, exercises. For oh, the, that's like the snatch and the clean and jerk. Snatch, clean and jerk. That was yeah. your thing. Yeah. yeah. What's the most you ever did? I did uh, in pounds. That would be four hundred and twenty-four pound clean and jerk, and three hundred and thirty-six pound snatch. 400 pound over your head? Yes. Son of a bitch. I'm not yeah. fucking with you. <laughs> that's, that's wild. 400 and what? 424 pounds. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of... How much were you weighing? Uh, and my competitive weight was 198 pounds. Wow. That's pretty strong. Oh, thanks. I mean, were the guys... It was very competitive, very close in the competition? Yes, it was very competitive. I mean... Um, on Olympic level and world championship level, they lifted, you know, quite a bit more. Uh -huh. But I quit um, when I was young and uh, didn't pursue it any further. But when I was in my junior years, I did good. I did really, good, really well. Is, is there, a, this is the last part of that, is there a trick? I know there's a technique and a trick to get that thing up there, right? Yeah, well, there's technique and strength. I mean, yeah. it's both. You can't just lift it up <laughs> if you're weak, you know, obviously. No. You no. gotta train. 425 pounds, that's a lot, man. Yeah. I mean, that's the whoosh. Yeah, you gotta like bring it up. You gotta clean the weight to your chest, squat down with it all the way, stand up, and then put it over your head. So So um, anyways, I looked up your credits, right? Sometimes they don't tell the truth, right? Yes. Uh, sometimes they don't know the truth, right? And it said you did three thousand movies or a little more than three thousand. Probably more than that. What do you estimate it? I think probably about 3,500. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a big number. Yeah. <laughs> 3,500 scenes pretty much, right? Uh, probably, yeah. Maybe even more. Because um, in some movies, I had like two scenes or three scenes. So, I mean, probably more. If yeah? they say, yeah, it's like if that's movies, they probably more scenes. So 3,000, you know, titles. Yeah, over 3,000 titles, yeah. So scenes, I, I would say probably around 4,000 scenes. But I guess when you get over 3,000, it doesn't really matter whether it's 35, 3,000, 4,000. <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty, it's wonderful. Yeah. I think yeah. I did 3,000 scenes. Right. But I, my career wasn't as long as yours, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, but you yeah. were one of the, you know, best ever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I remember the first time we met, you know. Back in, I think it was 98, right? I think so, 98 I, or 99. I was working with your girlfriend, Alina. Yes, yeah, right? everybody thought she was my girlfriend. Oh, really? But she wasn't. Oh, okay, good. You know what I mean? She uh -huh. wasn't my girlfriend. I was just helping her out because oh, uh, yeah? she didn't speak much English back uh -huh. then. And, you know, like, remember I had to translate a lot for her, explain, like, things on set, like, how things were going to go. Like, when the director said, okay, I want this or I want that. So I was helping her out, but since we always like showed up on set together, everybody figured, oh, you know, they're together, like 
you know, they must be a boyfriend or girlfriend, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought for a second, but yeah. we were working for Joey Silvera. Yes. In the hills, Hollywood yes, Hills. Yes, yes, I right? remember that, yep. And outside in the backyard, it was outside scene. In the pool. Right, in the pool area. And the girl was hot. She was horny. Yeah, yeah, she, she was, she was a, great. She was a horny, nice girl. Yes. And we had good chemistry because a lot, a lot of girls back in those days, John, when I worked with them, if I liked them and they can handle it, you know, the chemistry was there, then it was great. But a lot of girls couldn't hang. You know what I mean? They just wanted to, rah, you know, yeah. Rah, oh, yeah. scared or, you know, because, yeah. you know, I put a lot of juice on. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, I remember that scene afterwards. You said, I could do that. Yep. Right? You yep. said, I could do that. And look at you now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let me ask you this question. Because that was a pretty good scene I did, right? Oh, that was amazing. Uh, were you, was it harder to do those type of scenes than you thought? Uh, you know what? I, for me, I don't think it was because I also you know, have an athletic background. Mm -hmm. So when you have an athletic background, you're used to like going at a fast pace. And uh, so actually, that's what I prefer. Hard and fast? Hard and fast and like you know, energetic. Mm -hmm. So I've always been like that in my personal life too you know, with girls. Mm -hmm. So that was like my style. That's why I was like admired, you know, you uh -huh. and, you know, a couple other people that brought it, you know, brought the game like that. Um, and cause th that was me. All right. All right. So yeah. yeah. So you weren't taught, he wasn't talking shit, no, no, <laughs> you know, cause no. most people, rah, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You could deliver. Right. I mean, no, yeah. I mean, you know, you weren't, you know, you know, most people I'd say about 99 point, 5% of the people that come in the business and see, say, oh, I can do that. And those 99.5 cannot. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So you're part of an anomaly. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, you are. Yeah. Because you did it naturally, right? Yep. Well, back then, I remember, it was pre-Viagra days. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I thought. And so, by the way, that was Pink Butts Motel with Alina, me and Alina. And I have the trophy that we won best sex scene of the year for XRCO. That's awesome. Yeah, that was a great scene. I was right there to see it. That yeah. was awesome. I knew you guys should win something for sure. Yeah? Yeah. It was hot. 1999. And um, the truth is I did a lot of scenes that were wild and horny. But sometimes the people were a little biased towards me. Really? Yeah. Believe it or, you know, and, you know, the critics, you know, the guys jacking off with the little dicks watching, you know, and, you know, I'm not going to say any names, but, you know, you probably can understand the oh, ABN yeah. or. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But early days, the XRCO guys were very cool. Very good guys. The ABN guys, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to say anything back. The early guys, you know what I mean? I think that they were mistaken. How did you meet Joey? for that particular scene. Joey Silvera, you know, you brought Alina there. Did, how did that come about? I think um, it might have been Jim South that uh, put Joey in touch with, um, I don't remember, either myself or Elena. And then when uh, we spoke to him, he said, you know, he's got a great guy. Uh, and he would like to shoot a scene with Elena. And that's how we set it up. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you were, she was with Jim pretty much. Yes, she was with Jim South, yes. Okay, we're modeling. Yeah. May he rest in peace. May he rest in peace. Great, great man. Unbelievable, right? Yes, a lot of respect for him. I love him. He, he treated me like a son. I loved him like a father. Yeah, he was great. Very yeah. pleasant. And very cool. Straightforward. Yes. Like, I don't know if there'll ever be another porn agent like him i think probably impossible yeah nowadays it's all different yeah. completely changed yeah i mean you've seen you got four decades now right wow yeah <laughs> damn four decades of porno so what did what did did alina say anything after that scene i'm just curious that, did you say something to her did she say uh, anything yeah uh we spoke and she said she really enjoyed it she yeah. said you were great uh she had a good time on set she was happy she was, she was a nice girl. She was, you know, she was hot. Yeah. 
what what other guys you said that you appreciated their style? You know, you know, aggressive, whatever you want to call it, passionate. Uh, well, Rocco, Rocco, obviously, yeah. yeah. Um, he was, uh, you know, to me, he was pretty good too. You know, he brought it on, turned on the game, and everything. Unbelievable, and, Rocco. yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, you Rocco, and then uh, you know, I also like the way Eric Everhard performed. Yeah. Also, you know, me and him got in around the same time. Mm -hmm. I think he might have gotten in like maybe a year earlier than me. Mm -hmm. So he was always like, you know, our style mm -hmm. and everything. And um, um, I would say probably you, Rocco, and Everhard and, and Nacho probably Nacho. as well. Yeah. And Nacho was great. But he was, yeah. yeah, he was that time. Yeah. He Just was came around the time. Yeah. yeah. So I think those were like, to me, you know, like my style, like what I like to watch, what uh -huh. I like to see. And I, I could relate, uh -huh. like going, you know, like fast and hard and turn on the energy and everything. Uh -huh. So I will say like you guys were, were it. I never watched Eric Everhard scenes. Is he, I mean, I seen it from a distance. He was just in one position, but does he go all over the place or he just stays stationary and trying to fuck the girls hard? Um, no, he, he definitely, um, uh, varies in positions. Okay. You know what I mean? He gets yeah. into his zone and does yeah. his thing. Cool. Some, some people say that he, um, was a big fan of my work and he had, Modeled himself after me. Some yeah, I think so too. I mean, me and him talked about it, and we always used to say that you were like, I think, one of the OGs that, you know, like brought the style. You and Rocco were like uh -huh. definitely the OGs, I think, that, you know, we looked up to, you know, like uh, uh, because we liked, I mean, a scene with you or Rocco, we knew it was going to be energetic. It's going to be very like strong, passionate, you know what I mean? And yeah, that, with a hard like, dick. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I'm not a soft dick. <laughs> right. And you just went on and on for like 30, 40 minutes, an hour, bam, you know, and yeah. uh, I love that. That was beautiful, those yeah. days, for me, you know what I mean? Yeah, nothing boring. Yeah, yeah, right, it's not, so to, today, after all, you know, the actors that's come and gone, is there any actors out there that are competitive with me and Rocco? Um, I mean, there's probably one or two, maybe. Yeah? Yeah. Who? Well, there's this new uh, Russian guy. His name is Marcus Dupree. Uh -huh. And I guess he started out working for Rocco. Mm -hmm. So he, so, so to speak, went through Rocco's school, I guess. You know, Rocco, <laughs> you could say, trained him. Uh -huh. So he performs in that same manner, and he's really good. Is he? oh. I've performed next to him, you know, many times and, mm -hmm. uh, and seen him perform, and he really turns it on, and he's... Um, uh, you know, very aggressive and very, you know, like fucks very hard. And so he, I think he's definitely one that came along in many years that, you know, I would say like on that level. Mm -hmm. That's it. See, I mean, there are a couple of other guys that are really good, but their style is different. You know, they're more like more mellow, more, mellow, mm -hmm. more like romantic, mm -hmm. you know, like, their scenes are like slower paced, but they're real good performers. Mm -hmm. But the style is different. I heard of a guy, I think, won some awards, was Mick Blue. Yeah, he's, he's actually pretty good. Pretty good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, okay. he's good. And he can, uh, you know, deliver. He can, you know, like go fast, and then he can go slow, be more romantic, whatever. So, But, yeah, he's one of the... Definitely, other guys? Yeah, definitely one of the top guys. Are these guys natural? You know what? I have no idea. It's hard to know, huh? Honestly, hard to know. No. I don't know. To do, to do, you know, I'll just make a simple fact. To do a scene naturally, right? You already know this. <clears throat> Keep your dick hard and put a lot of passion, a lot of energy, because you get hot and sweaty. It's a lot easier just to do a nice, slow scene. Your dick stays a lot harder. Absolutely. Right? Because the energy, your heart pumps, the blood, you know. It's like running. You get tired, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so it's just, it's very difficult for somebody to turn on the heavy-duty juice consistently for an hour to two hours. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we know that over the time, not that many people could do it. Absolutely. Without an enhancer. Yes. Anyway. Even even with the enhancer. Even with an enhancer. Even with an enhancer to go that intensity for yeah. that long, I don't know of like a handful of guys that could do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, yeah. I never seen too many, right? Yeah. Rocco's in my time, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah Ro- for sure. You know, Rocco, Rocco, you know. I've seen Peter North throw a little juice on sometimes, mm-hmm. but um, I guess that's about it. You know what I mean? In yeah. the, in my neighbor in my time. Oh yeah, yeah. In your time, like you guys were just probably the two of you, you and Rocco. Yeah, and the truth was, it was Euro versus America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it was funny. But anyways, Rock was a hell of a nice guy. Yeah. I love him, yeah. You know him well? You worked with him a couple times? Uh, you know what? Actually, I've never worked with him, but I've met him, and uh-huh. he's a very nice guy, yes. We worked side by side a few times, right? And I think the last time was more like a East versus West. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know, but people might not know, when you perform side by side with a, a guy, right, and a, a girl, obviously, <laughs> you know, the guy with the harder dick, and even a bigger dick, you know what I mean? You know, it can fuck your head up if you're not on the same level. Right. In the scene, you can, your focus can get lost, <laughs> and you can go down. As soon as you go down in the scene, the pressure's on you. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. And so, you know, so I think me and Rocco were like East versus West, so it was like, you know, it becomes kind of like a, a cockfight almost. Right. I think, you like know a I mean? healthy competition. You're like, shit, I can't like, you know. Right, right. I'm going to fuck him harder. You know right, I mean? right, 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 right. And Rocco's great and he's unbelievable. Bigger dick to me, better looking. But I beat him that day. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But anyways, <laughs> I mean, you know, he's Rocco. He can't. And the nicest guy. Anyways, did you ever have that type of competition with somebody or feel that way when you were working side by side with somebody? Maybe you didn't like him. I liked Rocco. So maybe he's, you know, you know, especially when somebody you don't like, man, it gets right, kind of right, right. Really, I've seen the guys that don't like me, the dick goes down. Right. <laughs> right? right. I yeah. said, oh, so you really got something against me? Okay, okay. You know what? I've actually never really focused on that because, like, I just focus on a girl. Uh-huh. So to me, whoever is next to me, mm-hmm. it doesn't bother me whether the guy is like my level, better than me, or. Or worse than me, I don't really think about that. I just think about doing my best mm-hmm. and just focus on a girl. So I never really felt, you know, like um, any pressure by working next to anybody mm-hmm. on my part. So I guess maybe I could handle wow. being under pressure well. Really? Yeah. Huh. So it never really bothered me. You think weightlifting helped that? Because that's competitive level. I think so. It yeah. definitely helped because I knew how to psych myself up for, you know, like... when. When you lift competitively or do any kind of competitive sports, you know how to get into that zone. Yeah, your heart. Yeah, you know, control your heartbeat and, you know, focus and everything. So I think same thing with scenes. You know, you just do you think, focus on the girl. Mm-hmm. And that was, that, that was my approach. Yeah, well, makes sense. I mean, I always focused on a girl, but, you know. <laughs> right. You know, I want to win anyway. Right, sure, sure, <laughs> You sure. know what I mean? Sure. I guess I was competitive, you know what I mean? So whatever. But, but back then, like, uh, you probably, the only guy who could compete with you was Rocco. You know, I don't think anybody else could, you know, compete with you back then, so. Not really, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, even now, you have a handful of guys, you know, yeah. so. Well, you know, I just, it, you know, it's so weird. I mean, you've got a lot of years working now, but I can tell you, if you do retire, when you do retire, right, and you're gone for a few years, it's like a whole, like you've just been gone for 20 years. Oh, yeah, true. It's strange, you know what I mean? True. But I have been gone as a professional performer for 20 years. Wow, it's been yeah. that long. Yeah, as a professional. Oh. Yeah. I, I did my own scenes, you know, for six years, and that's all the work I did. I might have did one or two scenes for Joey, uh-huh. but... It's not the same as being in the war, kind of the war zone, right. kind of the competitive, you know, field. Right. right. But um, to me, it seems like a whole nother world. Right. Away now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Especially like uh, back around 2003, 2002, 2004, there were a lot of uh, like DPs being shot, a lot of anal DPs. So... A lot of the good guys like really worked a lot and had to work together. So I felt like back then we had a pretty good team, you know, like um, of, you know, I worked, I was uh, fortunate enough to work for a couple of really good Gonzo companies back in the day, like Anabolic, Diabolic, uh, Evil, 
in Red Light District, uh, Platinum X. I mean, the, the top companies, um, which had the top guys working for mm -hmm. them. And we had like sort of our own team mm. and everybody got along and everybody did great scenes. It was great times. It's important. There's a great point you bring up, you know what I mean? Because it's important when you're working, you know, two, three guys, four guys, or anabolics, gang bangs, you know right. what I mean? Whatever. That everybody gets along, you know? Absolutely. Especially in a DP. Absolutely. Uh, people might not know this, but, you know, you have to work together, right? Because you can smash the guy down. Oh, <laughs> right? yeah. oh, yeah. He's trying to keep his dick hard, right? Oh, yeah. Or, you know, vice versa, or the guy could, you know, piss you off and nothing works. Yep. So through the history of porno, I think there's been teams. You yes. Know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, let's go through the teams real quick. In my recollection, because I don't know about the 70s teams, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking John Leslie and Jamie Gillis were kind of a team. That's mm -hmm. what I kind of think. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think. Mm -hmm. But let's go to the 80s. Tom and Mark, Tom Byron, Mark Wallace. They did a lot of work together. Peter North and Tony Martino did a lot of work together. Right. Right? Right. I did a lot of work with Peter North. I did the most work with Peter North and Mark Wallace. We were teams. Yes. Right? Yes. Tom didn't want to work with me. You know, <laughs> much. You know, I mean, he was a great performer. Tom Byron's a very good performer. Yeah, he was, but yeah. he wasn't a very, uh, his style was a little different. Right, right, yeah. But kept his dick hard. You know, because oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah. It's hard to keep your dick hard. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. Oh, yeah, he was one of the OGs for sure. Yeah. Good, good performer. And so then the next crew, I guess, is part of uh, Mark Davis and Vince Foyer or the Anabolic Ewan. Yeah, you know? I think also like back in the, probably like early 90s and middle 90s was Dave Hardman and Rick Masterson. Oh, yeah. I heard they like kind of, you know, like did a lot of uh, stuff. I mean, they weren't like the, you know, up on the right. high level. Yes, yes. You know. Uh, but back then, yeah, it was like probably me and Eric Everhard. We, we did a lot of... Uh, so you did a lot of work with Eric Everhard? A lot of work, yeah. How many scenes, you think? Oh, my God. It was hundreds. Hundreds? Hundreds of wow. scenes, yeah. Right. We've done a lot of scenes together. So it was me and Everhard and um, also um, John Doe. Was, oh, you did a lot of work with John Doe? Yeah, John Doe really? worked with us. Uh, he worked a lot with Anabolic, huh? Yes. yes. Yeah, John Doe was a cool guy. He was, yeah. a, he was a good performer. Very good performer, yes. And also Steve Holmes came around. But he came around the 2000s. Yeah, he came around the 2000s. And, uh, you know, he was part of the... Team too. I mean, we did a lot of scenes together. So you did a lot of scenes with him. Yes. So yeah, you a did a lot of scenes with Steve Holmes. You did a lot of scenes with Eric Everhard. Mm -hmm. What about Mike Stefano? Yes, and that was, I was going to get oh. to him too. Yeah, Mike Stefano. Uh, we did a lot, a lot of scenes together with Mike, and Mike is an awesome performer. Hell of a nice guy. Amazing, great guy, great one of the best ever as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, I got to mention Manuel Ferrara. Mm -hmm. You know, he came around the time too, like around the same time as uh, Steve Holmes. Uh -huh. And uh, although he, I mean, we did quite a, yeah. quite a bit of scenes with him too. How many, how many you think? You and him together in scenes? It was quite a few. I mean, probably, I don't know, maybe 100 scenes. That's a lot, yeah. That's a lot. And uh, But then later on, you know, he kind of swayed away and he never really liked to do a lot of uh, group stuff, like DPs and stuff like that. Uh, harder. Yeah. So he, you know, like, but uh, majority of those scenes, I would say it was like Everhard, Steve Holmes, uh, John Doe, Mike Stefano. I worked a lot with those guys. So how many scenes did you do with John Doe? Oh, quite a bit. I mean, back then, because we, we were both director performers for Anabolic. So we all worked and shot for each other. You know, so it's you also Lex, Lexington Steel. You worked with him a lot? A lot with him, yeah, because he was, you know, part of the anabolic team uh -huh. too, and also even before that. And he's another uh, really nice guy and a really good performer yeah. too, I uh -huh. would say. And uh, so within, you know, those handful of guys, like five, six guys, uh, we did a lot of stuff, a lot of scenes together. That's interesting. Of, yeah. John, I mean, John Doe, that's interesting because 
I don't think that many people work side by side with John Doe, you know, as far as, as I thought, you know, but I guess he did work for anabolic, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I knew him pretty good, you know? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. He was in the business a long time too, like probably around the same time like you got yeah. in, right? Yeah. Before me. Well, even before you. Yeah, before me. And he was well respected. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, could act and he had a big dick and the girls loved him. He's a good looking guy and yep. you know, and he was an interesting guy. Yeah, I mean, he was a really cool guy. Yeah, Definitely. was cool. We, we traveled, uh, you know, to Europe many times uh, together, so. I wonder sometimes, because I worked for Anabolic, you know, but I had fought Chris, you know, the owner. Right. In a boxing match, and I beat him in a boxing match in 92, right? Mm -hmm. Like a charity boxing match, right? And he's lucky I didn't knock him out, really, you know what I mean? Because he kept holding on to me. But anyways, <laughs> but I did drop him once or twice. Uh -huh. Anyways, <laughs> um, he never, he, I worked for him once or twice. And when I worked for him in the gangbang, I, I smoked everybody in the scene. You know what I mean? I mean, I was on fire, actually. You know what I mean? Sometimes you're on fire, sometimes you're not. But the days I worked for, for his company, I was on fire. Mm -hmm. Right? I was like... <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You know, I'm, you know, I was on fire every day, you know what I mean? But, you know, some days I really was on fire. And I made these guys, in my opinion, look like shit. You weren't there, of course, you know what I mean? But Tom was there, and a lot of people were there, and I made them just look like they were dead. And I always wondered, what the fuck? If you got a guy that's strong and good like that, why isn't he on your crew? <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. But anyways. That's, that's, that's yeah, a good question. I, I was a guy working. I'm, I was ready to work. I do three, four scenes a day, you know, mm -hmm. happily. Anyways, this is about you. So this is interesting about the teams because I've never brought up the teams before. Yeah. But you've been on a lot of teams because you've done a lot of work. Yes. yes. And so those are the main teams you think that were around? Back then, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've worked, I mean, I'm pretty like flexible as far as I can work with anybody, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but the preference obviously goes to, you know, like the guys that are like the top guys, we're all on the same level and it makes it easier, you know, like Wait. to work with. And, the, you know, it, turn, it turns out to be a better scene and the girl likes it better when the guys are in sync and in tune and, you know, they both know what they're doing. And it's like, you know, when I work with these guys, we already know like by what, how we talk to a girl or by every move, we already know what the next move is going to be, where we're going to go, what we're going to do. It's that easy. Because uh -huh. you, know? you know the guy, right? Yeah, because you know the guy and we already know, like, you know, if I take a girl and I twist her one way, he knows where to go to follow me. If he does it, I know where to go to follow him. It's like there's no, like, uh, like, like a match, like, hey, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I pull the girl this way, you pull her that way, whatever, you <laughs> know what I mean? We all work in sync, you know? Uh, so uh, it definitely helps. And, I mean, there were... You know, some other good guys, too, that were in the mix sometimes, you know, that I worked with. Uh, you know, I can't mention all the names. If I don't mention, you know, somebody's yeah. name, that doesn't mean that, you know, like, I don't think they were good or anything. It's just I usually mention, you know, the guys that I worked with a lot. And, you know, but there were, you know, quite a few other guys that, you know, would be in the mix sometimes that did quite well as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... So back to, um, so those are the teams, everybody. And by the way, today is January 20th. Yes. Inauguration day. Right. For those that want to know what time we're doing this, it's about two o'clock. He's already been inaugurated. Inaugurated, yes. Joe Biden. So hopefully he'll make America great again. Hopefully. And <laughs> anyway, so um, Alina, back to Alina. Did you fuck her a lot? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah? Yeah, we had fun, yeah. yeah. And I did uh, a lot of scenes with her as well. And oh, everything. Yeah. yeah? How many? Oh, I don't know. Probably maybe 20. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, 20, 30 scenes. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a hell of a lot. 30 scenes is a lot of scenes with one girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One time I worked with a girl named Melanie Morty. Melanie Moore. 49 times. Oh, my God. Wow. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, she wasn't totally my type. She was a hell of a nice person, right? But she really wasn't my type. So I really wasn't on fire, you know what I mean? Right. I was like, oh. <laughs> Her again, right? Trying to make sure I did a good job, right? <laughs> right. But she was a good performer and she was very sweet. But they just kept pairing you guys together, huh? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> anyways. Yeah, it happens. She was, she was real cool. <laughs> um, so you, you fucked Alina a lot off camera. So how did you meet her? I met her, um, actually, I think I met her um, through a mutual friend of ours. And, um, and then I met her on set by accident because like I met her through a mutual friend of ours and then I haven't seen her for a couple of months and then we met on set and we're like oh wow like I know this girl and she knows me and everything and like um as a matter of fact like she had a hard time speaking English I mean she was just here for not not that long in America and uh um she you know she asked me if I could you know like help translate some stuff and I did and everything. And then, uh, you know, well, now we're in the same business. We know each other. So we start hanging out more and everything like that. But uh, I helped her out quite a bit. That's ironic because, I mean, because you're Russian or yes. Ukrainian. Russian. Russian. Yeah. And she's Russian. She's Russian as well. I mean, we're both from Ukraine. See, but back then, Russia and Ukraine, they were like, the same thing. It was like part of the same country and everything. Now it's all like separate. It wasn't know? divided yet. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't divided, it wasn't separated. So we didn't really, uh, back then, it wasn't like, are you like Russian or Ukrainian? Now it's like uh, the politics and all that stuff, you know, but it's, you know, we're still, you know, same people pretty much. Is the same language still? It's, it's very, very similar. I mean, it's a Slavic language and uh, although they are, there are differences, but it's very similar. I mean, it's it's mutually understandable. Like if somebody wants to, like if somebody, let's say, doesn't speak one or the other, but they could explain to one another like what they need. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that close. How did you get to America? Oof. Um, we, uh, we came here as like refugees, like political asylum. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? I mean, because I'm not familiar with well, why. Well, uh, my mother didn't want me to go to Afghanistan and fight for the for the politics. All the bullshit. All the bullshit. Yeah. So uh, she said, "Yeah, you know, like I got to bring you out because I don't want to. Uh, I don't want you to go there and dying for nothing." And pretty much that's what prompted it. So you could just say that you're a refugee because you don't want to fight and just go? Well, I mean, back then, you know, the United States and the Soviet Union um, were kind of uh, at Cold War. And um, anybody who would, like, come from the Soviet Union and pretty much say that they were against the system, which we never liked the system. Anyway, uh -huh. not too many people did. Uh, they would definitely give you a political asylum. Wow. Well, see? That's interesting. I don't know those things. <laughs> yeah, really, you know what I mean? I mean, they do they do that a lot of places, and you know they're gonna do that a lot more here. Yeah. Now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in some cases, it's important, helpful, save people. Sure. Obviously, because sometimes this war is just a bunch of bullshit. Oh yeah, I mean, I think most wars are a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, it's money. It's money and politics and all that stuff, which to me is like the dirtiest. The dirtiest of the dirtiest, that's why. <laughs> dirtiest. Yeah, I don't want to get involved in politics. <laughs> right. So, huh. So, how old were you when you came? And you're my age. You're born in 60... 69. 69, okay, one year younger. Uh, so, uh, what year did you come here? Uh, I came in the 80s. In the 80s? Yeah. Where'd you go, exactly? In Los Angeles. Los Angeles? Yeah. Uh, well, you, well, 81, 82, 83, 84? 81, I think. That's a good time. Yeah, it was a great time. 80s anyway. was, the, was the best year. <laughs> that was great, right? Awesome. Awesome. I, I love the 80s. You're 12 years old. Um, yeah, 13 almost. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a good time because the girls are pretty. Oh, but, yeah. But the girls are pretty out there too, right? Or no? Very pretty. In Ukraine, very yeah, pretty? In Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, all over. All yeah. over Eastern Europe, girls are smoking. Really? Blonde and. Beautiful. Are they horny? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. When was the first time you got some ass? I think I was 13. Really? Yeah. That's a good age. Yeah, that's a good age. Did you pound her out? Absolutely. <laughs> I always, like, I was just, like, like a bunny, you know? Like, yeah. I, 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 it was my style. I don't know. I just, I guess it's, like, it was my preference. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. I always like to be energetic. Uh -huh. How long did you fuck her for? Who was she? Maybe a minute. Oh, shit. You game? First time, oh, yeah. I busted it up like within a uh, minute, man. like minute, maybe a minute and a half. I was like, uh, yeah. like but the best thing at that, at that age, you just keep going. You know, uh, you just busted it up. I kept going. You know what I mean? It's like your dick doesn't go down when you're like 13, 14 years uh, old. Yeah. You know? How long did you fuck her for then after that? Uh, probably 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. You came again? Yeah. All right. Uh. So what she look like? <laughs> she was older. Uh oh. She was much older. She was I'll 36. I'll tell that these days. <laughs> yeah, she was 36. God bless her. Yeah. God bless her, right? God I bless mean. her. Oh my God. God bless her for sure. She taught me a lot. That's beautiful, yes. right? Oh, what a dream. Yes. She was pretty too? Very pretty. Yeah. Voluptuous, yeah. yeah. That's cool. How to, how to work out? She seduced you, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I, I ditched school. She was a neighbor of ours, and I ditched school one time. And uh, you know, She said, come over? She said, uh, as a matter of fact, and it's a true story, it, it sounds like a porn scenario, but it, it wasn't. She asked me, I mean, her TV wasn't working, and she asked me if I could come in and take a look at it. And all it was, it was an uh, antenna cord that kind of got loose, and all I had to do was tighten the antenna behind, and the TV started working. So all, that's all it was, you know what I mean? So, and then... You know, we started talking, and she was wearing a robe, a nice robe, and uh, nothing, nothing else, and everything. And one thing led to another. She opened the robe, or no? You opened it. She didn't really open the robe, but uh, we started kissing. You know, we started talking, and we started kissing, and then uh, I opened the robe. You know, and I was fucking like my heart was pounding. You know, I was like my first woman ever. You know what I mean? Like. Uh -huh. But, uh, I mean, I fooled around with girls, like, made out with girls and everything. But, I mean, we never, you know, did anything, like, sexual. So, yeah, I got lucky. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I love those stories. I had a couple secretaries kind of do that. It was great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't fuck him, though, unfortunately, because I was scared. I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, the husband woke up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big and strong guy. <laughs> and the kid then said, what are you doing, Mom? But I think I was 12. Mm. Anyways. There you go. So we, did you watch porn? Oh, absolutely. Back in the day? Of course. Before porn, before. Of course. Like when, did you, when did you first start watching porn? Oh, man. I think I was around maybe, I think as soon as I came, you know, when I was like 12, 13 years old, I started watching porn. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You remember any of them? Yeah, I remember some um you know, I remember Tom Byron being in them. I remember on Jeremy, Harry Reams. Um, you know, I, I remember I watched um, Devil and Miss Jones and uh, Deep Throat. Oh, yeah? Wow. And opening of Misty Beethoven. I, I remember I remember some of those titles, yeah. Was Eric Edwards in, in Devil? I think Eric Edwards was in a couple of those. I had him on the show. You ever meet Eric Edwards? I don't you think You ever heard of him? think so the name doesn't sound familiar. okay oh he started in 1969 oh wow so he he was the first guy to well he wasn't the first guy but he worked with linda lovelace deep throat 17 times wow she kept re requesting him in new york city anyways go ahead 1969 wow that's one of the real ogs huh <laughs> he said he watched her fuck a dog really mm -hmm. yeah i mean everybody knows the story you know but he was there but, um, <laughs> you know, each to their own, whatever. Yeah, to each, to each his own. As long as nobody gets hurt, yeah. you know. Judge you not, let you be judged. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't judge anybody on anything, especially mm -hmm. on sexual preference. Right. To me, exactly. as long as a person is a good person, I don't care what they do. I feel the same way. Yeah. But I like when the girls like guys, you know, the pretty oh. girls. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do appreciate when a pretty girl loves men, you know what I mean? Yes, when... It's so much easier to work with her too because there's chemistry and you can tell that the girl is really enjoying herself. Yeah. You know, she's not just putting on an act. Uh -huh. I love that too. But even to talk to him in the street, you know, you love a woman who loves men. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like I, women, you yes, know what I mean? Absolutely. I love women. Yes, so I love women too. <laughs> so you were watching the porn and it was, got you excited? You loved it? I loved it. Yeah? I loved porn. From the first time I saw it, I loved porn. Uh -huh. I thought, man. Even back then, I, I said, you know, I wish I could do that. Yeah, really? Absolutely. At 12 or 13, you yeah. said you wish you could do that? Yeah, I wish I could do that. I said, that, that, that's uh -huh. great, you know? Because to me, I always thought of it like, 
because I loved women. Like ever since I was a kid, I just felt like an incredible like attraction towards mm-hmm. women. You know, I just felt like I love women. So I always thought like, hey, that would be awesome, you know, like to, you know, have sex with all these like hot chicks. And like that would be your job. So in other words, all you could do is do that. Yeah. I thought to myself, wow, that's like a fucking fairy tale. Yeah. You know, so. So that leads me to the question ahead of time. How did you get in the business? <laughs> you know, when, where, and how? You know what? Um, I used to do, uh, I was in IT field. I was a Microsoft certified systems engineer. Programmer? And, you knew programming? Uh, kind of? it's, it's a little different. It's like networking, you know, like, I mean, uh, where you hook up, you set up servers and you set up like in companies, there's like 30 different people. You s- set them up with permissions. So let's say one department can only see what they're supposed to see. They can see other people's files. So it's like you connect, you create a network and, you know, like supervise the mail server. And so it's like, it's not really programming, but it has to do with pretty much connecting all the computers so they could communicate with each other. Uh, and then in the evening on like three or four days a week, I would uh, do security for strippers. What girls, women? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the stripper guys are pretty big and strong anyway. So Right, right, yeah. right, right. And uh, so, you know, since I loved women, uh-huh. definitely, you know, women. So security for them when they're doing what? At their club, you mean? No, 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 no. Uh, I would uh, take them to bachelor parties. Okay. Let's say, you know, and, uh, you know, explain all the rules to the guys, exchange money, you know, make, make sure that nobody, you know, gets rowdy with a girl or does you know, like right. that doesn't like cross boundaries that the girl mm-hmm. sets and everything, and also drive them to private shows and stuff like that. So that that type of security. Yeah, yeah. So um, were they slinging pussy sometimes? Uh, sometimes, not very often, but some of them would. Because those the day, those days, girls weren't slinging pussy very much compared to today. Yeah, absolutely. It was not. It was like forbidden, kind of. Yes. yes. But um, how and, old were you? probably around let's say 20 25 26 uh-huh. something like that and um a couple of girls that i met they were doing porn as well and then they did you know this thing on the side and uh, one of them i started like you know seeing and um uh, we went to a couple, she took me to a couple of like uh, swinger parties and we fucked in front of a lot of people. And she said, you know what? Looks like, uh, you know, you can keep your dick hard in front of uh, a lot of people. I How said, many people? I don't know, it was probably maybe 40 people there, something like that. And uh, I said, yeah, I said, they don't bother me. You know, I don't care if somebody watches me, it's kind of cool. You know, I'm into like, sort of, I guess, voyeurism or whatever. I mean, it doesn't bother me, you know. I, having a good time and she said well yeah not too many guys can you know like can do that usually you know like everybody likes the privacy and stuff like that I go yeah don't bother bother me and she said well you should try to do porn I think you know you'll do very well who was the girl um it was a girl named uh Lexi I think she started out maybe you probably fucked her Lexi Snow and then she changed her name to Lexi something I don't remember. Oh, I remember. But and then, and the, another girl was uh, Rick Master's sister. Whoa, really? Yeah. She did porn. Yeah, Rick Masters. Uh, Rick Masters. Rick Masters. Rick Masters. Yeah, not Masters. His sister. Yeah. She, she did porn. Yeah, yeah. She was in porn, and then she was. What was her name? Did. Oh, God. that's crazy! I didn't know that. Yeah, and she was, uh, she was a cool girl with really big tits natural really? and everything oh. yeah so i used to drive them you know huh. do security for you fuck them both uh Rick yeah. masters group yeah. was she good she was good yeah okay yeah. huh that's crazy yeah. uh i look it up but it's probably not there because you'd have to you know he wasn't that popular right really. right otherwise i'd look and see who the hell she was right right but anyways yeah that's cool uh, so so then what happened well and um uh, then on one of the sets, she, she told me uh, who to contact. 
she gave me a couple of contacts and everything. And uh, she on one of the sets or, or no, 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 like off. I mean, uh, I jumped ahead of the uh, game. Uh, she she told me who to contact. Okay. And uh, I kind of like didn't jump on it right away. Who? She told me to contact uh, Elegant Angel. I remember back then, and also uh, Jim Lane. Those oh. were the two contacts she gave me. Oh yeah. Oh. And um, she w- she went to uh, she went to some set, and I don't remember who it was. It was some some small small shoot or something. And I think the guy, I guess she called me and she says, "Look, you know, like, can you come come over right now and fuck me?" I said, well, "What's going on?" And um, <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Well, I'm I'm on set right here right now, and the guy's having like wood problems." So, you know, we need somebody to stand in or, you know, like, otherwise I'm going to, you know, we're going to have to kill the shoot and I'm going to lose some money and stuff like that. So come over and, you know, you can make some money and remember what I talked to you about. This is your chance, like, to pretty much break into the industry. And I said, okay, you know, give me like 40 minutes, you know, and I'll be there. So, you know, I came over and, you know, I fucked her and everything went well. It came easy? Uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, it was cool. It, was, it wasn't many people. It was just one guy with a camera over there. You know, it was just me and her and uh, and a guy. Right. So, who was the the guy? I don't remember. Okay. I no. don't remember. I don't think it was anybody big in the industry. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I, you know, like maybe it was a private client of hers. I don't know. Oh, but okay. she told me it was you know like. Mm-hmm. So uh, he paid me three hundred bucks back then. What year? It was ninety eight. Ninety eight. Yeah. And uh, beginning of 98, yeah. And uh, after that, she says, well, see, now you can say you already did a scene and stuff like that. And then uh, I worked for Jim Lane and then for Elegant and then... So then you called Jim Lane or she connected you guys? Yeah, I called Jim Lane and I said, I worked with so-and-so girl. She gave me a contact. She said to hit you up. And uh, he said, yeah, I'll give you a shoot in a couple of days gave me a shoot and then I worked for him and then I worked for another company and then it just snowballed you know? really? yeah. wow I mean Jim Lane's a nice guy very nice guy yeah I've known him for a long time and he's very cool very good easy going fun to talk to yeah him. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's really trippy so your dream came true yes, yes. I'm just I have one regret uh oh what I should have started when I was 18 oh, I should yeah. have pursued it like sooner maybe but sometimes this porn entity will co- will give you a chance, and sometimes it won't because the way the timing is, you know what I mean? Yeah. So sure. maybe, but maybe not because you never know how this mother porn works. It's very, you know, trippy. I mean, if you believe that kind of shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I kind of believe it a little bit because. It seems to me like a lot of the stories, people really loved porn, and the porn magnetized them in, and they made their way a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. You ever hear Mike John's story? Yeah. Well, yeah. Crazy story. Crazy story. Yeah, yeah. I remember Costa Mike Rica. John. Yeah, yeah. I remember Mike John, of course, because we used to work for Anabolic, Diabolic, yeah. But Anabolic pops up in Costa Rica, and he helps, and he wanted to be in porn, and it was like crazy. Yep. So it's like, it knocked on his door. Yep. Right? I mean, yeah. it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so anyways yeah maybe it would be more fun maybe when you're 18 but maybe not maybe not yeah that's true yeah. well we'll never know but I'm I'm glad that I was able to get in whenever yeah. I did too 25 you know? years old I was I think I was 28 28 yeah because uh, 98 98 yeah right yeah. or 20 yeah, 27 20, 28 right before 28. before okay. uh, right 29. before I turned 29 okay yeah, a couple months before. so that so when me and Joey and you met how long had you been in the business? Probably just maybe two, three months. Two, maybe three months? Three, four months. So you had done a few scenes? I've done a few scenes already. 10, yes. 20, 30 scenes? Probably like maybe 20 scenes. 20 scenes? Yeah. Did you know who I was? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Of course. <laughs> I'm so far gone out of the business, you know what I mean? But once upon a time, I was a very popular person in the business. Yeah, of course. That's what I told uh, Yelena before uh, she went to set. I said, oh, you got a great guy. You got one, you know, the best guy in, in the States pretty much back then, you know, uh-huh. in, in the world. I said, you're going to have a good time. 
that's cool. Yeah. You, you did you see me in porno movies before you yeah, got into business? Of oh, course. Okay. Of course. All right. Yeah. Oh, so you're watching a lot of porn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> love porn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's well, why I always loved your style. I said, oh, man, this guy gets in there. He kills it. I love oh, it. Yeah. You know, he's like, <laughs> brings it on. I go, never a dull scene with, uh, with TT, you know? <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, I wasn't fucking around. I was happy. You know what? I was so happy. And I thought the same way you thought. If I could get in this business, oh, my God, what a dream. But when I got in there, it was more mysterious. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's hard to find porn. Think right. in the 80s how hard it is to find. I mean, you're in L.A., yeah, you can find it. But if you're not in L.A., it's not everywhere. Right. And it's very hard to get a hold of, you know what I mean? Like in the 90s when you came around, yeah. it's a lot of, it's there. It's getting more mainstream. Right. But it was not mainstream in the 80s. You know, and so it made it way more mysterious because not that many movies were out. Right. So, and you're st they're still shooting film. So when you're on the set, when you make it finally to the set, there's only a few people working. Mm. There's not that many actors, right? Yeah. Not that many girls. Yeah. And you get there and you're like, whoa, man, I made it to porn. It's like it's a real movie set, right? Right, right. It's different than when you came. Yeah, because VHS was already around. I mean, yeah, there was yeah. already the guns of style. Yeah. Yeah, so you have big sets, film, big stars, and not that many people. So they know the pressure is, I think, greater because it's such a small family that if you make a mistake, they're like, oh, that guy sucks. Mm. You know what I mean? Fuck him. And then we, by the time you got, it's getting more spread out and more right. sp spread out. Right, yeah, I could see, yeah. But it was fucking like a beautiful dream. I remember driving down the 405, right, to one of my shoes with Stuart Canterbury. And I was like, well, I'm going to go work with Kim Alexis. Or what, I think it's Kim Alexis, a brown hair, dark mm -hmm. haired girl. I seen her in a porno, <laughs> right? It was like you know, because there weren't that many porno stars. I mean, they come and they go. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. But anyways, yes. it was fucking cool. So I thought the same way you thought. Oh my god. So you know, anyways, all those girls. What girls? You know, you saw. So you were watching the eighties girls. Yeah. What? What in the eighties? What are your favorite? Who are your favorite girls? Ooh. Um, in the eighties. Well, I love I liked Hypatia Lee. Yeah. Oh, I fucked her. You want to tell a quick story on that? All right. Yeah, All right, me. everybody. I'll tell you a quick story on Hypatia Lee. Because she was fucking pretty. She was hot. Yes. Horny. Yes. Something about her. Yes. Right? Yes. And from what I understand, I could be wrong. But after I fucked her so good, right? Mm -hmm. Her and her husband, Bud Lee. I think he has an agency today. Right. Yeah, right? I know, bud. Yeah. They broke up. Really? Uh, maybe she enjoyed herself too much or whatever. It's happened a few times to me working with girls, you know? And, um, but she was fucking hot. Beautiful. Yeah. But that's a great girl to pick because I never bring her up, but she was beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I really liked watching her. She was definitely was Those beautiful. Those tits, right? Those yes, tits were sticking yes. out. Like pointy kind of tits, pointy, right? Yes. Yeah, she was high patiently unbelievable. Actually, yeah. Also, you know, Emberlyn, I used to watch Ginger Lynn, all these girls. I mean, um, there were a couple more. Who, you know who I used to like? Christy Canyon. Christy Canyon. Yeah. She's, a, she's an amazing person. Yeah, she was she was pretty hot, I thought, back then, too. You know, I enjoyed her scenes. You know, she had nice, natural, big tits and very pretty face, I mm -hmm. thought, you know, and I really liked watching her. I work with her. She was, she was sexy. She's great to work with, yeah. See? You had some... Girls, I missed some I of mi those legends. I missed Ginger and Amber. It was, you know, Amber came back, but I was already kind of out of it. But I would, you know, Amber in the 80s was something. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very pretty, too, and uh, good performer. Peter North told me he loved her, you know. And then I had Tony Martino on here the other day, mm -hmm. right? And he was the boyfriend of Amber Lynn. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I Way in the 80s, you know huh. what I mean? I guess for a little bit, something like that. And he said, yeah, she was unbelievable. Hot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways. So um, so those are the 80s girls. How about Candy Evans? You remember Candy yeah, Evans? Yeah, Candy Evans. It's fucking oh, hot, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Sexy, right? Yes, yes, yes. There was a girl that I used to watch. I don't know, something about her passion or heat. You might not remember her, but she was a blonde, kind of a little bit of a strong, raspy voice, but she was physically fit, hard body. 
She had this big, fat, blonde bush with a big, fat pussy. Her name was Danielle. She was just fucking made me crazy. Danielle. I mean, I'm sure if I would see her, probably, yeah. you know, I'd recognize her because I watched a lot of porn. Yeah. Right then. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah. And uh, even like, you know, Anna Mall. I remember Anna Mall. Oh, she's from the 90s. From the 90s, yeah. yeah. But she was great, too. I yeah. liked watching her. I work, I work with her a lot of times. And um, she, was, um, she was a nice person. Yeah, there were, you know, there were quite a few girls. But uh, how about yeah. the black girls like Angel Kelly? Angel Kelly. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, my God. So hot. There was a girl named Sahara. Sahara, yes. That face, right? Unbelievable. Beautiful. There was Beautiful. a girl that I was used to fuck around with in the 80s, you know, in the 89. Mm -hmm. Purple Passion. She was a petite, like, but she was great. I remember, very petite, yeah, right? Yes. Hot. Yes. She was wonderful. Yes. But I got to fuck her, at least. And I got to, there was another one named Mauve Denor. I don't think she did that much work, but she was sexy, dark-skinned girl. I fucked her. Mm. She was great. Yeah, I don't remember her. Yeah. But, but um, in the 90s and early 2000s, there were really good black girls, I remember. I what, worked what, hold on. I don't want to leave the 80s yet. Yeah. Nina DePonka. Remember yes, her? Yes, right, yes, yes. Fucking yes. hot. I didn't fuck her, but she was hot. Anyways, so those are the 80s. So let's go to the 90s. What 90s girls did you like the most? Or you, were, you watching, do you, were you watching any 90s girls and then you finally fucked them? That you, a 90 girl that you loved and you finally got to work with her? Yeah, I think there were a couple of them. Um, um, oh, God. I'm so bad with names sometimes. Um, Let me help you out with okay. one girl who I thought was hot. Who was an unbelievable, for me, unbelievable fuck. You know, white girl. Kylie Ireland. Oh, yes. That's, yeah, I was going to say that. Kylie's amazing. Fuck. Yes, she was amazing. Yes, I worked with her a lot. Yeah? Yeah, because she came back in uh, early 2000s. Uh -huh. And I worked with her a lot. And yes, yeah, she was pretty hardcore. Tell the truth, in the beginning, I thought, oh, you know, because she was a country girl. Uh -huh. Pretty, yeah, like pretty very, girl kind of. Very pretty kind of. So I thought maybe, you know, like uh, she's not going to like the, you know, like, like behave, you know, like the fast pace, uh, uh -huh. energetic, aggressive stuff. But, she was into it. She amazing. One of the best girls. Definitely. Her, her pussy, you know, was just so nice and fat and sweet and good. And she had a, a nice body too. Yeah, and very pretty face, I yeah. think. You know, so yeah, she's definitely she, that's one of the girls, absolutely. I was I, I even told her many times that I used to watch you and you know, I jerked off to her. So you got the fire. She was hot. Her. Absolutely. I loved her. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love fucking Kyle Ireland, yeah. Yes. She's definitely one of them. And, um, How about this one? I don't think you work with this one, but she also has some crazy good pussy. Rebecca Bardot. She's yeah. a little bit older, but blonde. Yes, I remember her. I don't think I worked with her. You're right. I don't think, because I think when I got in, she was already... Probably hit and miss a little bit, yeah. Like retired, I think. even like. Here's a girl that you've... For sure they work with, but let me ask you what you thought of her. Because she was hot. Sierra. Sierra, yes. Brown haired girl. Yes, yes, she was hot. <sighs> wow. When you kissed her, she kissed so well. And her pussy was oh, so wet and so perfect. And her skin was nice and she was so cute. <laughs> she was unbelievable, Sierra. So you could look at her and say, oh, she's cute, but she was special. Sierra was special. Wow. But tell me some more, girls. Uh, there was a girl. God, I'm so bad with names. How about uh, Kitty Young? Kitty Young. Korean girl. I think I have worked with Kitty Young. She was really good. Oh, you got to work with Kitty Young? I wow. think I got to work with Kitty Young in 99. Wow, really? Yes. She was hot. Very hot. I loved her. Very hot. Um, thought she was very hot she she worked she was one of the country girls for extreme associates i didn't work for extreme that much because by that by the time they made their company i had right. to, starting to slowly move away in producing yeah, yeah she was one of the owners jessica too. darling no, i worked with jessica darling but it wasn't jessica tiffany minx tiffany minx you, you liked her i like tiffany minx 
I work with Tiffany Meeks probably her her first scene. Oh, really? Probably. Probably in like 92 or something. Mm -hmm. And I worked with her probably 20 times. Oh, wow. Yeah, she was cool. I mean, she didn't make me crazy, crazy, uh -huh. but she was a great girl. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so, too. So she was one of the girls that I used to, you know, used to watch, like. Yeah. I think Tiffany Minks, a lot of people loved her look. Because I know a lot of people talked about her and they were big fans of her. And she was a cool chick, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was like a really, like a stoner chick, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. She was cool. And um, I, I know I heard a lot of people really like Tiffany Minks. And when she first got into business, her ass wasn't as big. So later on, it became bigger. She right. became like an ass woman for right. Patrick Collins, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. And, um, but she was a cool chick. You, know, you work with her. Yeah. 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 What would you think? She was great. Yeah. I had a you know, good time with her. Mm -hmm. She was nice. Yeah. And she's a girl we don't bring up that often, but she was a real porno star, yeah? Yes, yes. And a girl I wish I would have gotten to work with, Savannah. You probably worked with her, I'm sure. I work with Savannah a lot of times. I th Savannah used to always tell me to take her out, kind of tease, like like we were probably on the borderline of going out. Not that, you know, she had like probably 100 boyfriends. I wasn't <laughs> going to be that one, you know what I mean? Yeah. But we were pretty cool, and, you know, she was, she was very pretty, and I remember the first time she walked into video exclusives mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. I saw her walking in the background in 1990, I said, whoa, man, who's that blonde? She's so hot. She had a little bang haircut. She had that nice body. She just had all that bubbly energy. She was no tits yet. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she had little tits. But she yes. was just, I, I always liked her. She's always very nice to me. But she was she was pretty. There was another girl I remembered. She's from the 80s, Victoria Paris. I worked with her. You did? Yeah, she's a very nice girl, very easy to work with. She but, looked she looked pretty hot to me. I mean, I liked her scenes and everything. So, I mean, for me, I never thought she was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. But when you got near her and you work with her, she had some some special. She, you know, so maybe it came through on camera, right? Because she was a star, right? Right? right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. um, I like she's very, yeah. very nice. I worked with her probably five to ten times. That's awesome. And another one of my favorites was to watch. Obviously, I wish I would have worked with her, Vanessa Del Rio. I missed her. Yeah, she looked like she was something, huh? Oh my God, that girl! She looked like she could suck some dick. <laughs> yeah. And I just loved her. You know, I mean, to me, she looked very sexy. I loved it. You know, like strong. The, like yeah, just her facial features, her body type. You know, the boobs, the mm -hmm. butt. I mean, everything. You know, she had great lips. I just, she just turned me on. You know? yeah. And, yeah, and, I mean, yeah. And obviously, you know, Sika. Seika, right? Seika. Yeah, 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 I wish I would have. She was beautiful in those days, it, but that's like the late seventies, I think. Yeah, early eighties, maybe early late seventies. Yeah. One time, I we did a I did a signing with her. Uh huh. You know, a star signing at a store. She was very cool, but she was already two thousand six. You know what I mean? Yeah. Two thousand eight, whenever. But she was cool. But she was fucking. She looked beautiful, right back then. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, for sure. I would have liked to Icons. fuck. I would have liked to fuck Marilyn Chambers. Oh, yeah, Marilyn Chambers. She was amazing, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't fuck her, but I would like to have because he made me horny. You know what I mean? Right, right. She looks sexy. But, um, and, and even Tracy Lords looks oh, too. Oh, God, please. Yes. Tracy Lords. I mean, <laughs> Tracy Lords, I can't even look at. I said last time, last, you know, podcast with Tony Martino because he worked with her all the time. And he said, Tracy, <gasps> she was hot. Tristy Canyon said Tracy Lords was hot. Everybody says Tracy Lords was hot. She was, yeah, she looked hot. Yeah, she looked hot. I missed her. Definitely, yes. I loved her, right? She was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You can't, something about her, you can't forget her, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. She had a very, like, uh, exotic look to her. Yeah. Oh. Nipples, I mean, she just oh. was something special, right? Yes, yes, yes. So what about Janet Jackme from the 90s? Oh, Janet Jackme. She was great. Unbelievable. Oh, God. Oh. She's one of the best ever of ever. I agree. I worked with her probably 15 times. Really? But she was, we had a great chemistry. Maybe we had like a little something, you know what I mean? I'm sure we did, you know what I mean? Because I think we played around a couple times. Yeah, some girls. Off camera, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, she was fire. You know who else I thought was beautiful and was such, another just incredible, horny, hot, beautiful girl was Midori. Midori, yes, I remember her. Yeah. Fucking beautiful face. Yes. Unbelievable. The pussy was just like, you can't even, oh, so good. Yes. See, unbelievable. 
And who else was even more wild in a scene? The wildest of all black girls, I think, and maybe the wildest of all performers, one of them, Monique. Monique, yes, I got to work with Monique. <laughs> she was Monique, wild. Yeah, Monique was amazing. Yeah, she was very wild. There was a girl that came along later, uh, was Jada Fire. Jada Fire. I, I did Jada Fire's first scene. Really? I did her first scene in 1997, I think. Oh, wow. I fucked her so hard, you know, <laughs> all around the fucking hotel room for my movie, right? Black Street Hookers, number 11 or 13. That she didn't come back to work for three years. Oh my God. So I'm like, she came back to work and I don't know if it was because of me, but she was having fun, you know what I mean? But you know. Yeah, she was great. 2001 I, or two, she came back. She came back, something. yeah, around there, yeah, 2002, I think. She did only one scene and then she wow. disappeared and came back. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, she was great. She was great. She was great, yeah. But uh, I, I, I don't know, I think, you think, so Jada Fire is as, because I didn't work with Jada Fire. I did her first season, she was an amateur, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, You know, I was in my prime, you know what I mean? So she, I just, you know, she was horny and hot and wonderful, but she wasn't like Monique, you know what I mean? So did she turn into Monique later? I think, yeah, she definitely stepped up her game. Maybe she got, like, into it more because what I loved about Jada is she was into her scenes. Like, she really enjoyed, yeah. you know, like, the scenes. Uh -huh. She was genuinely having a good time. Mm. Um but Monique was like just out there. She looked, she was possessed or something. She yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. Oh, like, you know, yeah, she was. You know. <laughs> I, I, I don't think Jada Fire didn't go that far, right? Probably not, not maybe not that intense, you know. And Jada was, Jada was pretty. Monique was that hard body and she was, yeah, yeah she was wild. Right. She was, and you know what about Monique? When she first says, I'm not working with you, you're too rough, right? <laughs> Right in the first, yeah, amazing, right? right. Probably 96 or 95, probably right. 96, 97 when she first came in, right? And I was like, why, man? Come on, baby. I love you. Look at you. You look hot, right? She went over these guys, and then finally I work with her, right? Right. And she always requested me after that. You know, she loved me. And she was such a sweet, or still alive, you know, I'm sure, but she's very sweet. Like, you know, she's wild, but that she's super yes. sweet. Yes. One who else was a real pretty girl? Obsession. Obsession, yeah. Light skinned black girl. She was yeah, hot. I remember her, yep. She was hot and yep, horny. Yep. Anyways, so what about Jenna Jameson? Jenna Jameson. Uh I thought she was pretty hot. Hot, yeah. I thought she was very hot. Um, you know, I watched some of her scenes. Um I thought she was very pretty. One of the, you know, probably most beautiful women in the industry. Um I missed, you know, I missed Which her obviously know? because I think she Got out of the business right around 97, 98 when I was getting in, or 96, or something like that. She had something, you know. I thought she was cute, but when you touched her, you know what I mean? You mm. felt like some electricity. Mm. And you fucked her, you felt some fire. Wow. So, you know, she was she was special. You know, I mean, she, when I was, sometimes you fuck a girl, your dick says, thank you very much, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And your dick is like, ah, right? Yes. It gets bigger and more blood is like, yes. thank you so much. You know, yes. thanks for taking care of me. And some days you stick your dick in a girl and like, you pull it out soft, right? Almost, yeah. right? Yeah. And your dick says, fuck you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? But when you stick your dick in Jenna, you're like, what the fuck? Right? And I was like, whoa, my dick just got like an inch bigger. Right? See? Anyway, she was great. Yeah. Tear yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What about the Asia Carrera? She was wonderful. She was wonderful too, Beautiful. right? Because I love her scenes. I did yeah. one of her first scenes way back when she started. And she was just so, I don't know. She was something about Asia Queer. She was like silky. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Something like, you know, she's part Japanese or whatever and part German. Mm -hmm. Right? Half and half, I think. But she was like a, um, a sports car, like a German sports car. But sexy and just like, you know, she, she always reminded me of something upper class right, right you know what i mean well she was quite intelligent from what i hear right like yeah mean. yeah intelligent but maybe that but her whole the whole package was yeah seemed like upper class you know like you're you know in yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know boardwalk on you know yeah so New that's York another great girl that i yeah. you know i wish i could have worked with but she was great yeah. yeah i mean tara patrick was a beautiful woman yes did you work with her yes i think actually no, actually, I never got to work with Tara Patrick, too. No. Because um, she started out, and then she got on a contract real quick or something. And, uh, and then she quit early in the biz, so I never got to work with her. 
she was she was beautiful. I mean, she obviously you didn't seen her. You know what I mean? She, yeah, oh yeah, I've seen her. Yeah, she's horny as hell too. Yes. You want to know who I thought was one of the best ever? And you probably, for surely, work with her. And she changed her name. You know, was Mirage to Brian to Brianna Banks? Yes. Yes. Brianna Banks in her beginning years was like. I don't know, man. For me, a, a 10. You know what I mean? Because she was something, her heat and her pussy and everything and her cuteness. What did you think of her? I thought she was great. I did her one of her first scenes when she was Mirage. Whoa, really? Yeah. Tell me that pussy wasn't... Was great. Incredible. Amazing, yeah. She was she very was pretty. Very like, she was like... Natural tits. Double, like Almost double D natural yeah. tits. Unbelievable. Yeah, very pretty. Unbelievable. Yeah, I agree. Unbelievable. I say it three more times. Unbelievable, unbelievable unfucking believable yeah yeah she was great i yeah. agree so so tell me some more girls from the newer times you know the 80 i, the, I mean excuse me the thousands the teens I, well i think one of the also like best girls back then had incredible energy was belladonna oh yeah that was the thousands that was the thousands yes i you, you want to hear the story on that one no, i got so many stories yeah. and this is about you but we're talking about Belladonna's. I was in Jim's office when she first came mm -hmm. to his office. I just got back with my girlfriend, right? That I had broken up with her for six years, so I was trying to be a good boy, mm -hmm. right? And Belladonna, I think I took pictures of her because I put her in a movie or something, mm -hmm. whatever. And she took, we went in the back room and she looked like she wanted to attack me, right? And I was just like, I got to be good. Right? I got to be good, right? I got to be good. So I just left. You know what I mean? I just left. And I kind of regret it a little bit because she was, you know, she was so sexy, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, then she became a big star after, you know, later. You right. Know what I mean? But um, my good friend, you know, was Nacho was going out with her for a yes. long time at yes. that point in time. And he says he didn't say it, but he didn't want me working with her. Because a lot of girls, you know, I would make him come good. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, he's got a bigger dick than me. He fucks great, but a lot of girls liked me in those days. And actually, right. I gave him a couple girls. I gave him the one pretty Spanish girl. Mm -hmm. that one, she was really beautiful Spanish girl. She's still mad at me, she says. <laughs> I gave her the nacho, right? I gave Jay Chasey Lane. Mm, wow. Jay, Jay, who married Jenna. Yeah. Because I was, you know, not into, you know. But Chase Lane was a beautiful girl, too. She was, yeah. You forgot her. Yeah, yeah. That, beautiful. That's true, yeah. Anyways, probably. so tell me some more, girls. So, um, from the thousands. There was a girl that came here from Romania. Her name was Sandra Romain. Mm -hmm. And she was one of, to me, also, like, the best girls, too. She was amazing. And that girl could do two scenes. She could do a gangbang for three hours, go take a shower, do makeup, and do another double anal scene. Uh -huh. And she could do that every day. I heard. I heard about her. Yeah, I used her for my movies. Yeah, I'm sure. She was, you know, she was one of the better ones. There was another girl named Harmony. Harmony Rose. Blonde. Blonde. Yeah, very pretty. Har uh, natural, Har natural tits. She was from Florida. Uh, she used to come out here and you know. Be Taller. Like, she wasn't super tall, but she was probably around. You know, without heels, she was like you know our height. You know, around five, 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 seven. Five, seven, five, yeah. eight. Yeah. yeah, five, seven, five, eight. I went out with her a few times. Not seriously, you know, but, you know. Yeah. She was very cool, very sweet. Very sweet, very cool. And she was a good performer. I mean, she did it all, you know. It's like. I worked with her, yeah. And she, she was, she would always come on set smelling good. Always very, like, well, like, all nails are all done up and everything. And just a professional, you know, like, I mean, really sweet. Yeah. Really good. I remember had the story we were working for. 2004, I think, when she came, right? Three yes, or four? Yes, 2004. Yeah, around okay. 2004, you're right. So anyway, I was working with her for Belladonna, actually. When she was, you know, her and Aiden back then, you know, when they were... Uh, I don't know Aiden, Her husband Aiden, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, me, me, me and her were working for them, and the scene was in this bathtub, like on the bathtub. And I remember, you know, like she was on this hard bathtub on a corner on her back and twisted a little bit, and... I could tell she was uncomfortable. And I even said, I said, look, you look like you're, you know, it's uncomfortable. You're like, I, you know, I know I would be, you know, I'm laying there like on this hard piece all twisted up. And then, you know, like I'm railing her and she's all like, you know, rubbing against that. So I said, listen, 
I said, well, let's just tell tell them they'll they'll put us on the floor or something like that. So you'd be. She goes, no, 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 no. I'll, I want it to be a good scene. If they want it here, let, let's just do it. You know, I'll, 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 I'll like bear through it. And I was like, wow. wow. And I said, are you sure? She goes, yeah, yeah, let's just do it. You know, it's cool. I can, I can take it like that, you know? Wow. So she would do whatever needed to be done for the scene. Like, and I was like, I was like, wow, that's like really going out of your way for like, you know, giving somebody, you know, like whatever they need in, in spite of you being that like uncomfortable. Yes. I think this is the girl, you know, but. Yeah, she went by sometimes Harmony and sometimes by Harmony Rose. Right, I knew her by Harmony. Yeah. But there's 500 results on her, so she might have did a lot of work. She did a lot of work. She did. She was active for about um, probably five years, five, six years, quite active. Um, I'd say she was probably active till about 2009, I think is when she, uh, she retired. Really? Yeah. So she was in the biz probably for about six years. We're looking at one of my comments. Sorry. People talk so much negativity sometimes. I want people to understand that John here is taking his time to come and do an interview for me, along with all the other people that have done interviews for me. They don't have to come here and do these interviews. So when somebody talks negative about any of my guests, not you, because they're talking about somebody else, I take it personally. So just remember that. These guys don't have to be here, and I, I appreciate them being here. Oh, thank you. I mean, you know, I have a lot of respect for you, always have and everything. That's why I came out. And when I heard it's you, you know, I don't really like to give out too many, like, you know, interviews like that anymore. But, you know, for you. Thank you. For sure. I mean... One thing I'm, I'm sure you, you know, you're familiar with, that all of us, you know, guys that are especially like the good guys, a lot of envy, a lot of jealousy, huh. you know, and that's why I think a lot of people talk shit is because, you know, they're jealous or they're envious. And, you know, I've encountered that. I'm sure you have too, especially, you know. <laughs> oh my God. You don't know how many guys I had to confront because I was that guy when I'm younger. Right. You no, know, hey, right. I knock on your door <laughs> or I just catch you on a set. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you know, I just scare you to death, you know. Right. I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Listen, that's how all we, of it. Whatever. That's how we. That's how it's done back home. You know, it's yeah. like so. I totally relate. You know, and I think that's the way it should be. You know, if somebody talks shit, say, "Hey, why don't you say it to my face now?" You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I'll make you say it to my right, face. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, there was a lot of uh, back in the two thousands. You know, they had all these forums pop up, and there were a lot of those. I called them keyboard oh, keyboard yeah. warriors. You know, they'd go on there and talk shit, and they have all these aliases. And then, like, I find out, like, some of these guys, uh, rev reviewers or whatever, they would see you. Oh, my God, you're the best. You're this and this and this. And then if I, if somebody would tell me, oh, did you see this guy's talking shit about you? It's that guy. And I'm like, really? I, I just saw him a few times. He's all, like, kissing my ass and everything. And then, like, he goes on there on a different name and he writes all this shit. So it's like I, I, I stopped looking at it seriously. I'm like, Really? I mean, are you that fucking jealous? Are you that like envious? You know, so it's most of the time when people talk about you, it's because you're doing something right, you know? So, uh, I mean, yeah, but you know, you still don't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. for sure. But I mean, I, le I just yeah. learned to, you know, like brush it off. I'm like, hey, you know, if you really have some problem with me, just come to my face and tell me, you know, what the problem is, you know? And if it's just because you're an asshole and you're jealous, then, then sorry, fuck you, you know? But if, it's something I might have said or done. I'll apologize if, if I'm in the wrong. I got no problem. You know, listen, I'm only human, you know, and uh, sometimes, you know, I maybe many times, you know, done something wrong or said something wrong. Yeah. And I'd be the first one to uh, apologize if I'm wrong because I, I take responsibility for my actions, you know, and I can't always be right or do right things. You know, I'm only human. You know, so. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Yeah. If I did something bad, you know, uh, tell me and I'll understand it. Sure. And then I, if I feel like it was true, then I'll say, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah. But um, did you ever beat up a performer? I never beat up a performer, but uh, I definitely like, uh, how can I say, uh, had some words with somebody, you know, like to put One them in their two? place. Yeah, a couple times. Who? You know. Ah, I'm ah, not. Okay. I'm gonna, 
say their name, but. Uh, did you ever f fight much? Yeah, when I was, you know, when I was a kid. You know, street fighting or fist is street fighting, fighting probably you know i mean of course you know like i mean i never fought competitive or anything you know what mm -hmm. i mean although like in here i took uh i took taekwondo for uh three years um mm -hmm. uh, i really liked it you know a lot of um, kicks yeah. a lot of kicks and everything uh i boxed a little bit yeah, yeah you know i took you know probably for about eight months but, cool. but like regularly you know i went to uh like a school we boxed we sparred mm -hmm. we you know hit the bags mm -hmm. and everything uh, I wrestled a little bit, not not very much, so but nothing like, you know, like competitive or anything. But street fights, yeah, I mean, I had to a lot of times, like like you're saying, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta well, stand your ground. Sometimes when you're smaller, you know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta stand your ground. You know, yeah. to me, it's like I never look for a fight, but my thing was I'll never walk away from one if I'm like put in a place where I have to defend my my honor, like a sort of like my manhood, my honor, mm -hmm. I, I'll defend it. I don't care. You know, that was my attitude. Yeah. I, I totally understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm probably a little extra, but <laughs> well, uh, anyway, so you did your first scene, right? Yeah. With Rick Masters' sister. No, it was Lexi, the, the other girl. Oh, the other girl. The other okay. Girl, yeah. So, you felt good on that scene. Did you, the next scene you did, did you feel comfortable doing it? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. You know, I like, I think what helped me too probably was, uh, fucking in front of many people like at swinger parties probably where it didn't bother me. But even before that, I remember, you know, like when we were, uh, sometimes a bunch of us friends, like three, four guys, we used to get like four or five girls. And sometimes, you know, like I would have no problem just, you know, whipping my dick out and like yeah. you know, fucking him. Well, where some guys would have to go to the bathroom with a girl to be alone or something, or like, or like, you know, like go to a different room or something like, and like say, hey, don't, don't peek or don't, you know, like, I mean, stuff uh -huh. like that. Where I didn't care. I'm like, you know, I don't yeah. care. You guys can watch, you know. So I guess for me, it was probably a little more natural. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, I didn't really mind. It's just um, in the beginning, I was always told, um, that everything's on you because if you don't produce wood, there's no scene. So where, where, you know, the girl can be, you know, not into it or whatever, but if you're good, you can still pull something good out of a girl and still make the scene. But if there's something wrong with you, there ain't no scene. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, for, for the scene to happen, it's very important that, you know, your dick doesn't go down and you don't give too many, uh, too many cuts to the to the director because because if you know if he keeps going up and down up and down and the girl has to wait and the director has to wait and then he has to you know like cut the scene together because it's all chopped up it's not good so in the beginning i always had that like pressure sort of like in the back of my mind i can't fail i can't but i react good under pressure i think because maybe my athletic background you know i know how to like zone in concentrate so maybe it even made me better because I always work good under pressure. Whereas I saw some guys that would do great on some scenes where there would be like somebody they, they knew and they would be very comfortable. And the minute they would get on set where it would be a little uptight, there was like more people than necessary, they wouldn't do well. And they would get nervous and, and they'd fail. And I could, thank God, you know, perform well under pressure under any circumstances. So I think that would, that's what made me a good performer. Well, that's interesting. So you, did you, we all have rough scenes sometimes. Yeah. Have you had some rough days? I mean, I've had, sure. I mean, I'm human. You know, I've had some scenes where I didn't feel as strong. Mm -hmm. And I would maybe, like, take a couple of breaks, like two, three-minute breaks. And to me, that would be, like, a very bad day. But then the director said, are you kidding me? Like, your bad day is better than somebody's great day. Like, I can't even tell. The only thing is, like, you know, you ask, like, for a two-minute break to go to, like, the bathroom and pee or, like, or, or have a sip of water a couple of times. And to me, that was already, like, me not being on my A game, mm -hmm. you know. So I always set the standard high, you know. But, but then I had good people to model after, you know, like you, Rocco, you know, a lot of people. So I always, like, said, oh, you know, I got to, you know, be like these guys. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. You, 
So you made sure, yeah, it was, yeah, so it was pretty serious to you not to. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I took it very serious. I mean, like, cause to me, it's like, if I do something, I got to be like the best at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I don't do anything halfway. If I like something, I got to give it all my best. So to me, I always brought my A game. It's like, you know, to me, it was like. In shape. Yeah. um, you know, rested. Yeah. All the, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I never did drugs or anything, you know, stuff like that. I never like would come on set, like, oh, you know, like without sleepless night or whatever. I mean, it happened a couple of times where we came to Europe and, you know, the time change or everything, but I was still fine. You know, I mean, like I was slept a couple of hours, whatever, but it wasn't because I was like partying all night or, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was good. So you never failed ever. No, I never failed the scene. Oh, good. Right? For good like this. Well, <laughs> yeah. If you fail a scene, now it's okay. Right, yeah, I guess. But you know something? This is another thing uh, I kind of learned, and I was told, and I think it's probably true, whereas you can do a 1,000 or like 5,000 great scenes. One. You do one bad one, people will always talk about that one bad one instead of those 5,000 good ones. So that is why... If I feel like I can't give a good scene anymore, I'll just retire because you got to go out with a good, you know, I don't want to go out because I'm failing scenes. Yeah. I want to go out because, you know, like I, I, I would feel like it's time for me to like yeah, step down. Plus, I mean, other, uh, you know, I mean, I got some other projects I'm working on and everything and there's, you know, there's different, um, how can it's chapters in your life. And I mean, I very grateful that I'm, you know, I'm able to do what I do for so many years and be on top of the game for so many years and, you know, still enjoy all these, you know, young girls, older girls, whatever, you know, just all these women. I'm very grateful for that. And, uh, but I know there will come a day in time where I'm going to have to, you know, like retire. Yeah. Yeah. There will be that day one day, but yeah. But yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well, I think that, you know, I think that if your mind stays clean, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you keep your body clean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that um, your mind is a big deal, you know what I mean? It's all in the, it's all yeah. in the head, I think. So you could last a, long, a lot more time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Steve Holmes is old. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 60 years old? Or is he... I think he's turning 60 in, as a matter of a couple of months, he's, yeah. he's turning 60, yeah. And so... Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's what people don't know either, that the pressure, right, especially pre-Viagra. Yes. You know what I mean? You, you could do so many good scenes, and as soon as you do a bad scene, especially if you're a great performer... Yep. And they used to say, TT, we hired you. We're paying your rate because you're going to do a great scene, the best scene for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, you know the whole yeah. pressure's on you. Yeah. I don't feel good today. Right. <laughs> right? And so there's a lot of pressure. So as soon as you fuck up, you know what I mean? They're like, ah. And then the vampires, the jealous oh. vampires. Yeah, because, you know, my name was pretty popular back in the day on the sets. I think before, yeah, even when you came around, you know, still. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But, um, you know. I didn't have any bad scenes, you know, bad, but, right. you know, I can just imagine if I did, the people would go, yeah, TT sucks, you know what I mean? Right, <laughs> Anyways, right. yeah, but we know. Uh, the pressure is, is crazy. Sometimes it's crazy. The, the pressure if you're a perfectionist. Yes, if absolutely. You, if you're a bum, there's yeah. not much pressure. Yeah, I mean, there are some guys, like 50-50 guys or whatever you call them. Mm-hmm. So the people who hired them, they already know, hey, they might have a good day today. They might have a bad day today. But when people hire you, and I was told that, because I a lot of times I would get the hardest scenes, and the director would straight out tell me, say, "Hey, the reason you get in the hardest scene is because we know you could do it." Mm-hmm. So see, sometimes that works against you as far as like you know, oh, yeah. because they would give you like the hardest anal like, or whatever. Yeah, or like place to to fuck on. Oh yeah, they always put me on a rock. Yeah, on a rock or something like that. You know what I mean? And you and you tell them some other guy is getting in and. They will tell you, well, look, because we know, <laughs> know. we know if we put this guy on there, he ain't doing it. So that's why you got to do it. You know, like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I totally understand. They put they put me first and last because they get him started in the future days, right? And then last to get him out at two or three in the morning, exactly. But you know, I I was so young and and full of cum that right. um, 
I was, thank you very much. And yeah. I'll go do a scene in between. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you put me on a rock at 120 degrees outside. I didn't really care because I was still young. Yeah. yeah. But when you get in your forties, Oh yeah. You know, cause I was with Joey Silvera one time and Joey was telling me, fuck, I don't want to do another scene standing up. We were working for Paul Thomas, vivid mm -hmm. one, you know, day, you know, 92, 93. Yeah. He's like, man, I don't want to fucking do another fucking standing up scene. So when you get older, you start noticing these hard situations. Absolutely. But when you're young, you're like, hey, oh, I don't oh, yeah. give a fuck. Oh, yeah. I'll fuck anywhere. But I, myself, retired kind of young, so I never noticed. But, yeah. 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 But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, definitely when you get older, you feel like your energy level yeah. He's a little like yeah, yeah. You're not, different. You're not, you get you, old. You get older. Yeah. Your body just doesn't recuperate as fast, yeah. you know? So it's like something you would like you, back then. Yeah. Two, three scenes in a day. It was no problem. Now it's like you do one like energetic scene. You're like, fuck, yeah. I'm tired. You know, I need like a few hours to recuperate. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, whereas before it's like an hour later, you're like doing a gangbang standing, whatever DPs, uh -huh. this and that, like no problem. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Yeah, so what's, sure. what's the most scenes you ever did in a day? Uh, I've done three scenes in one day. And I've done five BJ scenes in one day. Oh yeah, you like BJs? It depends. I mean, not really, yeah. not really, because I mean, you know, if a girl doesn't suck good dick, it's like you know she's scraping your dick like crazy. You know oh, what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and so now I remember I did like five five blowjob scenes, and I I kept telling the guy, I said, listen, I said I know I can give you three good ones. I go, but I don't know after that if anything's gonna come out. Uh -huh. And he goes, look, he goes, I just need you. He goes, I don't have anybody else, whatever. So we'll just do an hour breaks in between each one. He goes, you drink a lot of water. What do you want? You know, like protein shakes or the protein bars, just do your thing. And I'm surprised. I mean, even by the fifth uh, blowjob scene, I mean, something did come out. I, was, I mean, you know, not like a lot, but I mean, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, like for me, like I'm, I can understand because blowjobs don't get me that excited. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. I mean, once in a while, you know, I mean, you might say, oh, yeah, this is good. I like good pussy. Absolutely. Right? So you're not going to get as much cum coming out off a blowjob. Yep. Because you're not that excited. Some people, some guys, oh, I love blowjobs. I'll be like, let's just get this blowjob done and move on to some good Absolute, pussy. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm totally with you, man. I love pussy. Yeah. Pussy I'm crazy about pussy. Yeah. <laughs> I totally used to look at pussies you. when I was a kid. Yeah. I'm going to have one one day. <laughs> totally with you, man. Totally with you. The magazine's oh, God. Please. Yeah. <laughs> See, I always, I, I always, I always said, listen, I don't have any, like, I don't have an addictive personality. I don't have any addictions except pussy. Said, I know I'm not into like, you know, drugs, gambling, whatever. I could do without anything, but pussy, I can never do without pussy. It's like that's my only weakness is that pussy. I need to have that pussy all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, I would be a liar if I didn't say this. You know, I'm with you. Yeah. I've, <laughs> it's like, but I think that's what made us good, you know, because yeah, we love pussy so much. Pussy, yeah. You know, yeah, for sure. You know, <laughs> all these pussies, right? All this pussy. Cause you fucked. How many girls do you think you fucked? Oh man. Cause you did 3000 some scenes, but that's a lot of girls. Same times. You know, a lot of them same, again. but then also there were scenes where we used to do like 12 girls in one scene, uh -huh. 15 girls in one scene, 25 girls, like three guys and 25 girls, uh -huh. you know? So, I mean, it's hard to say, but I mean, I'm, there's thousands, I don't know. 3,000, 3, 4,000? Yeah, maybe four or 5,000, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. So all those girls, which porno star girl, you know, that we're talking about yeah. here, had the best pussy? Oh. <laughs> when you stuck your dick in there, you're like, oh, fuck. Man, I mean, it's hard to really say, but. Because there's so many out of those, out of thousands. Yeah. I mean, there's so many. It's not an easy interview. No, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And uh, and it's true that they're all different. Because I used to like, you know, let's say there's three girls and they're all lined up and I'm like, you know, sticking my dick into each one of them and each one feels different. Yeah. Each one is feeling, some feel a little more velvety, some feel a little more Hot. like silky. Yeah, yeah, some are like hotter. Some inside. are more uh, open. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. They're a little, you know, the con consistency feels different. You know, some are some more, are more raspy. open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's like some of them, you know, you're like, you think you can fuck them for hours. And another one, you think you're like, oh shit, I got to like oh, call yeah. myself from coming. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, for sure. Yeah, they're all different. But I mean, yeah. I can't really. You got to pick one, man. Oh my god! Come on, because oh. one one will come to the top of your head, 
or two, one or two will come to the top of your head that just stand out. Cause they, you know, that's what, you, you know, what happens that they stand out. They remember. See, I mean, there's just like so, like few of them, not just one or two out of so many, you know, like, I mean, it, now that I think about it, I mean, it's probably been definitely more than probably 5,000. I used to, I used to off work camera? a lot. No. I mean, off camera, yeah, it's one thing, but even on camera, because at one time, I remember one month, I did uh, 62 scenes in one month. Wow. So I was working every day, two scenes, and two days out of those was three scene day. That was like... Wow. That's a great amount of work, yeah. Yeah, so it's like... Sounds like the way I used to work. Yeah, yeah. so it's like uh, from probably 2003 up until about 2007, so like four or five years, I used to work like every day almost, like 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 crazy. Right, yeah. Those were the golden years of porn, I, we call it, you know? And it was just so much work. And uh, I used to go through so many girls. And I would say, I mean, definitely like we, Harmony, her pussy was one of the, you know, like one of the really, really like good ones, you know, like mm -hmm. in, in every way. You know, it smelled good. It felt good. Uh, just always wet. Like. And we want to throw this one little piece of information out for the audience, you know, that... The chemicals in a girl's body and the chemicals in another in a guy's body, sometimes when they line up, they make fire. Absolutely. Even if the pussy's not in crazy, crazy, it's just good. It feels even better because you're connected. Absolutely. But, so Harmony came to your see. Harmony came to you. Yeah. Harmony. See, she came to you. Yeah. yeah. So you have. So is that it? Oh, no, I mean, she came to you. <laughs> It was more girls than her, but I'm just saying she's yeah. one of them. One of the girls one where I thought, you know, I mean, to me, her pussy felt great. Stands out, hits you. Yeah, hits you. And I mean, okay. the pheromones, I mean, her smell turned me on. I mean, just her looks. She was, she was nice, yeah. Very nice, everything, yeah. You know. Kylie Ireland had a crazy pussy. No doubt. Kylie Ireland's Brianna Banks, too. yeah. But there's, there's a lot of those crazy pussies. For sure. I mean, bomb pussies. But yeah, okay. So that's For cool. Sure. You remember any girls, you know, that were popular? That way people understand it more that were real difficult to work with? You know, there were, I mean, I got along with everybody, but there were a couple of girls here and there, well, maybe out of the, so many, I mean, still a handful for me that were like really difficult to work with. Any, any girl's name comes to the top of your head? There, there was one girl, I don't think she was popular yet, but then she became popular um, with one of those internet companies. Um, she was difficult to work with because I don't know whether she was having a bad day or whatever, but she couldn't do anal quite well. Maybe she was overworked. Maybe she was sore or whatever, but she kept like uh, making it very difficult. And the director kept telling me to like rail her because they know my performance. And I couldn't because she would do this and I don't want to hurt anybody and, and then she's fighting me it's like it's like a wrestling match you know you're trying to mm -hmm. fuck her and she's like yeah. like this and I'm trying to tell the director listen you know I can't do what I usually do because the girl's not taking it mm -hmm. and you know she tried to still say that I fucked her too hard or whatever and it's mm -hmm. like you know so mm -hmm. but it thank god it was very few times mm -hmm. you know it happens well, you see, you're a gentleman so when you're a gentleman and you know, you seem like a gentleman to me. It seems, you know, it goes a long ways if you try to make the girls feel comfortable. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, because I want a good scene too. And mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything to a girl that's going to hurt her or make her feel uncomfortable because I love women. I don't, I don't get off on seeing women yeah. be in pain or something like that. I get off when I see a girl's having a good time and she's like coming. I turn, I get turned on even more. Yeah, me too. Like, I, exactly. People who say OTTs abuses girls. Never. I just, with the girl, she, where she wants to go, she don't want to go there, then you know, I don't go there. Exactly. Yeah. I, I totally relate because a lot of people used to talk shit about, oh, he gets in there, he just pounds the shit out of girls and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, but only if a girl is into it. I mean, yeah. if I see the girl's not into it, I'm not going to do it, yeah. obviously. You know, so it's like, and 90, probably, you know, like 95% of the girls who are into sex, they like the hardcore uh, energetic sex. It's only the ones that like hate their job and they just want to do the least amount of work as possible. They don't like to get rail hard because they don't like to be there at all. Yeah. 
you know. I, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I see more of those girls when my company, when I was running my company, than when I was an actor. You know right. what I mean? But um, right. I think things change. You know what I mean? But definitely, definitely, you know, things do change. I don't think things do change. It's a fact. So, um, is there any superstar girls that you worked with? I mean, excuse me, that you didn't get to work with, that you wanted to work with through this time, you know, that were around. Back in the 2000s? Anytime. Yeah. Anytime that you didn't get a chance to work with. You know, because some of these girls slipped by. You know who I want to work with so bad? Raquel Darian. Oh, yeah. Raquel Darian, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. she, I couldn't even look. She was just incredible. Her boyfriend was a, was a punk. Mm. And they didn't like me, or he didn't like me. You know? mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if I had fucked her, she would have been happy. But she was beautiful. I didn't get to work with her. Mm -hmm. um, there was a few girls that I didn't get to work with that I want to work with. But, you know, they slip by you sometimes. So, yeah, I mean, like Tara Patrick, I would have liked to work with her, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, she slipped by me somehow. Um, I think pretty so, much. Tara Patrick was the, one of the main ones? Yeah, I mean, back in my day, you know, when I was working. I mean, You still work. Huh? You're still working. Yeah, but I mean, still like, working, right? <laughs> I mean, like back in two thousands, but like I mean, your prime, you're saying, right? But uh, also like the girls uh, back from like the eight, 90s or eighties that retired. By the time I got in, you know, like we talked about yeah, some of these girls, that, I would yeah. love to, you know. Uh, but when in your time, the girls that slipped in, by you, you my know what time, mean? yeah. When don't think anybody, else. Jenna. Yeah, Jenna. I guess kind of hard to reach. Yeah, but she kind of looked. I think. <laughs> Was already done by the time I got in. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think she retired in '96 or '97. So anybody else that you could think of? That's it. Nobody comes okay. to mind, really. So because back then I think like I was working, you know, so much that I pretty much worked with all the, all the, the yeah, all the girls, all the girls, yeah, all the hot ones, yeah. What was that blonde's name that had the nice tits that Vince was going out with? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Amy Reed. Amy Reed. You work with her? Oh yeah, many times, many times. That's, I thought she was she was a nice, she was cool. She was very nice. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, cool girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that's I, about it, right? That's yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had good scenes with her. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, she wasn't like, yeah. you know, over the top or yeah, anything. Right. You know, but she was. You know, she gave good scenes and she was a nice girl. Okay, I, here's a girl I want to know about. In case you were working all the time, you probably work with her. The blonde that started going out with Charlie Sheen. You know, she oh, was sexy Brie, as fuck. Brie Olson? Yeah, Brie Olson. Yeah, I worked with her many times. How was yeah. it? Great. She was good. She gave good scenes. She, she was, had a good pussy. Was the pussy good? Yeah, yeah. Pussy was good. Her ass was good. Yeah, she looked sexy. Yeah, yeah, very sexy. Yeah, she was She was hot. How about the girl they made a big deal out of, that one uh, dark-haired girl, kind of skinny, that she did a regular movie? Oh, Sasha Gray? Yeah, Sasha Gray. I've worked quite a bit with Sasha Gray. Yeah. Uh, she was pretty good. She, you know, she gave good scenes. Yeah. Um, good pussy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hot. Yeah, yeah. She was good. Yeah, she was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, she was a pop. People liked her, and she was supposed to be really horny, right? So I didn't see any of her scenes really. Um, but Brie yeah. Olsen, I wanted to fuck. She looked sexy. Yeah, Brie Olsen. Yeah, I agree. Brie Olsen was very cute. Yeah, very. She had that cute. innocent look too, you know, yeah. the face. And so she was great. She was good, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. which girl we just talked about that you know we don't like head that much, but which girl do you remember gave the best head? I think Belladonna was one of them. And by the way, Belladonna's pussy was great too, and her ass. I mean, that's another girl that yeah. uh, she's so popular. I guess at that time that I, I don't know why I didn't mention her, but she was great too. Also, like great, great cock sucking skills. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think. I mean, there there were a few. There was there was a girl when I got into the business. She was still around for a couple of years. I forgot her name. That girl was she had so much saliva. Like when she would suck your cock, she had like crazy thick stringers. Really? What was her name? She she, she was amazing. Yeah. Amazing, like cock sucker. Ugh. <laughs> Man, yeah, some girls do stand out. Some girls, it's like, you know, they, they deep throat, like, you don't feel like... Janet Jack me, suck dick, oh, great. Yeah, Did you Jana, work with her? Janet, yeah. Okay, yeah. suck dick, great, right? Amazing. Amazing. Amazing, for sure. She, see, I mean, again, there's so many. Oh, it's so just, many. it's hard to, to really, like, it's like you really got to sit down and think for a while, you know? I want to know, so... 
So maybe Belladonna, but the people, the people know Belladonna was a great cocksucker. Yeah. And Jenna Jack me. Jenna Jack Those, yes. those two kind of stand out a little stand bit. Stand out for sure. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think you work with this girl. I don't know. But when I work with her in 92, she was so fucking sexy, so hot, so horny. I know you know her, right? Francesca Lee. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Francesca was great, too. I mean, I fucked her 92, man. She was, like, fucking beautiful, hot. Yeah. We had some serious chemical reaction. I'm sure, I'm sure. She was unbelievable. Uh, well, yeah, I worked with her way later than that. I worked with her, I think, in 2006 or maybe 2000, yeah, 2006, 2007. That's when I worked with her. Did she saw good dick? I can't remember, you know? Such a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, yeah she's, she's just, good. She's good, but yeah, she's pretty hot. I mean, hot, right? she's yeah. still hot. She's still hot then, huh? Yeah, she's still she was still I mean, hot. But fiery. Yeah. When we say yeah. hot, she's she was beautiful too when I worked with yes. her. Yes, but the fire. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Good I, pussy too. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I pussy was still good. Absolutely. Yeah, she was one. She was great. Definitely. I don't bring her up enough, but Francesca Lay was amazing. I agree, and another girl that I liked too. She was cool. She was a little like. How can I say? Like she looked like the girl next door, but she could really turn that up on a scene. Was Christy Mist, Christy. blonde girl? She was a country girl for Extreme Associates. She oh, used to be. Yeah. She used to be. She used to work a lot with Jessica Darling. I remember the name. Christy Mist. She was really good too. Yeah. Okay. You know, good girl. Like uh -huh. very, very uh, pretty. Mm -hmm. Pussy was good, and she was just very nice. Christy. But she could take it too. I mean, she was like a hardcore girl. But you could never tell. Looking at her, you could never tell. She was like that hardcore. Really? Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. I heard that name. You know what I mean? So she must have been something going on with her back then. Yeah, back then, you know, and then like I think she just she was around for like maybe two three years and she was gone. Who was the prettiest girl you ever worked with? Oh man, that's another hard one. Uh, yeah, there right. Was, there were so many. You know, there was quite a few here. There were quite a few in Europe, you know, because Eastern European girls are very beautiful. You know, Czech girls, yeah. you know, Slovak girls, Hungarian girls. Let's say the girls that people might know, you know, more, more starish, maybe on that side, that way somebody might know. Any vivid girls that were, Brie Olson was pretty, right? Brie Olson was very pretty, yeah. I mean, Raylene really? was pretty, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, Tara Raid. Tara Reed, or so she was uh, from uh, from Europe, Czech girl. Uh -huh. She was very pretty. I mean, ever catch any STDs? People always want to know. Yeah, this. oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I, you know, twenty three years in, in the business, uh, I think it's three times I caught STDs. Yeah. Tw it's not bad. Twenty three years. That's no, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Which Clim one's gonorrhea? Chlamydia. And chlamydia. And gonorrhea. Yeah. Uh -huh. Same old bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? Shot, boom, bam, thank yeah, you, man. Yeah, done. But by now it was all like pills. You just take yeah, yeah. four pills, done. Right, right, that, yeah. Z-Packs. Yeah, z, -Pax, z, -Pax, z, -Pax, z, -Pax, z -Pax, yeah, yeah, that's it. What, who do you think the best director you ever worked with? That's, you know, I would say the best director to me is the person that tells you what they need. And then once it comes to sex, because you can't really direct sex. I always looked at it like that. If you hire professionals, if you know who you hire, okay, you just tell them exactly what you need before the scene, but, and they just follow it with a camera. You, yeah, maybe, but you can direct sex a little bit, you know? You can do it because there's a lot of psychology sometimes. The scene itself, I guess you can't direct so much, but mm -hmm. the, the intro, and oh, even... Yeah, the intro, yes. And even a little bit of... Um, you know, a, a little something in between, you can still break it down and direct, you know what I mean? You don't want to fuck with some performers, but, you know, there's things to do. But, you know, on average, you know what I mean? It's really the performer's job, a professional performer to make yeah, it work. Yeah, you know, because, I mean, you, you know, like to me, a director explains to you, like, look, this is what I want in the scene. I want it to be like, let's say, more passionate or more this. I want you to focus on that. Or I want you to focus on anal. I want you to focus on this or on this and this. Depends on the theme, on the intro or whatever. Yeah. But once he tells you all that, uh -huh. then it's like you're pretty much running the scene. So he's there with a the camera or whatever. But if they're stopping you every two minutes or every three minutes and interrupting the flow, to me that really messes up the, 
the sex. The energy, yeah. The energy flow, you know, mm-hmm. between the girl and you, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times you build up that energy, that pace, you know, you go on a high, high pace, everything's great, the girl's into whatever, so, oh, God, we're going to do this, 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 like, <laughs> you're like, All right. guys, don't you see, like, how it's going? Just keep shooting, right? Like, wait till at least, like, it climaxes. Uh-huh. And then once the energy dies down a little bit, then whatever, do you think? Uh-huh. But, you know, so I think most of the guys who direct Gonzo, they get it. Uh-huh. So nobody in particular stands out? Not really. Okay. Yeah. The old days, there was more directing going on with the movies, you know what I mean? Yes. Features and all yes. that stuff, yes. you know, acting yes. and all that yes. bullshit. Yes, yes. So what's your favorite position to fuck to grow in? And Why? I I like I like the standing a lot where I hold a girl really her ass and she's like on top of you because I can really get you know she's lifting her up on the air yeah she, yeah she, like she's on wow. me and I'm holding her yeah because you know I can look at her I can kiss her and I can really rail her hard can you know stand, and, holding her up in the air yeah holding her up in the not air. a big girl though I mean I, I you know I've held up some big yeah. girls I've held girls that weighed like 180 170 pounds you know a big girls like you know six, how long six two Five minutes, four or five minutes. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's harder harder to go much more than that. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially when you're going at a, at, a, yeah. at a high pace and, you know, you're holding the girl, so it's like, uh, you know. I mean, I've done the know. reverse cowgirls, hold them up in the air like that. That's hell. That's Oh, yeah. That's hell. You know, yeah. I'm a short guy. You're a small guy, yeah. but yeah. you did weightlifting, so that's definitely got to help you. That definitely helped me, yeah, you know I mean? sure. Less stress on sure. your blood yeah, but, flow. But, but to me, it's like, the reason I like that position because, like, when you're really, like, you know, she's yeah. looking right at you, yeah. you know, you do your thing, you're holding her, you, you know, you can totally control her, you know, like, I mean, yeah. you know, it's just, it's just hot. Well, you like to, you like to kiss the girls? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The girls still kissing these days? I mean, because <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't look like they're kissing on TV, man. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it all depends. You know what I mean? Some do, some don't. Less than, the, less than used to? Or I, I would say, yeah. yeah? Any girl that stands out as a great kisser? There's not that many great kissers in your not whole really. life. Yeah, not not. So really. there's got to be one that stands out. No? Okay. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the worst position for you? I, I There's positions I could... I hated Spoon, man. I hated Spoon. Yeah, I mean, it's just a little boring to me, Spoon. You hate Spoon too? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fond of it. I, I can't really say I hate it, but I mean, I'm, it's not my favorite position. You know, um, like, I mean, I like it all pretty much, but yeah, like I would agree. Spoon is kind of boring to me. It's just, it sucks. I yeah. don't like it. Don't feel good. I don't like yeah. it. Yeah. Do you ever come too fast in a scene? <laughs> I tell the truth, man. No, I am telling you the truth. Really? Uh, no, man. not, you know, not too fa- I mean, there's been, I would say there's been maybe two or three times where I came prematurely. Like, let's say, cause usually the scenes in Gaza would last like probably say 40 minutes. Uh-huh. So there would be times where I would come like 20 minutes into the scene, but then I would say, okay, I just need like 30 minutes. Oh, okay. Take a 30 minute break and then come back, boom, just finish the so scene. A few times. Yeah. I would say about maybe two, three times. Mm-hmm. You know? Then you just come back, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I did that too. I think when I was younger, especially I could just, I could come and just keep going, right? Keep going yeah. or one minute and keep yeah. going. But yeah. no, I mean, one time I did five come shots of the scene. They, they want me to do it, you know, Man. for the, um, you know, whatever. But um, that's, that's that's pretty amazing. Thank you. I mean, I could do a lot, you know. But so, did you fuck a lot of girls off camera? You know, when you yeah. get done, you know, sometimes when you get to working, you fuck them on, at work um, during the scene, and then you fuck them off camera yeah. afterwards yeah. or even before. Yeah, you fuck a lot of girls yes. off camera. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you on the set too. Happens, yeah. Yeah. yeah is this course. fun? Yeah, absolutely. Listen. <laughs> this is party time, man. Come on. <laughs> absolutely, man. I mean, like, I remember on one of my birthdays, uh, they threw this, it was sort of like the company I worked for, Red Light District, and they, we had three birthdays, or like April 7th, April 8th, April 9th. Wow, really? And Whose birthdays? Anybody else? It was, uh, it was my birthday, one of the other guys that worked in the uh, human resource oh. department. And the owner of the company. So it was like, and in this Owner big, of the company, so that's David. David Joseph, yeah. Okay. So all, there was like, like a big warehouse that's through a big party. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot of people there. And I think that, in that warehouse that day, I fucked like 
like six, seven girls. Oh, wow, really? So every girl wanted to come and like, you know, like really? they give me a birthday present. It was a separate room. So one was, you know, she came into the bathroom. We started fucking in the oh. bathroom. The other two girls said, oh, I wanted to go like for whatever. So we went to the room. They came in. And I like, wow. yeah, man, it was, was, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, what year was this? This was 2000, I believe 2005. I think. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Thousand four or five, five, I think. Did you date any girls seriously in the business? I dated a few, yeah. Who? I dated a few. Um, <laughs> um, I dated one, of, you know, like uh, for a little bit. Uh, she, she was, I thought, very good performer and a really good girl to Julia Ann. Julia Ann. Yeah, you remember her? You know what? I, I don't even know if I met. I don't think I ever met Julia Ann. But she talked a lot of shit about me. Really? And I never met her or worked with her. Really? Yeah, so it was one of those weirdest things. But wow. I mean, I heard she was a cool chick, so you dated her, huh? Really? Yeah, wow. yeah, for a little bit, yeah. We dated for a little bit. She was, yeah, she was a nice girl, very really? nice, wow. very nice girl. Um, she was a pretty girl, I guess, back in the day, right? Yeah, back in the day. I think she's around, like, longer than us. No. Huh? Well, no, I mean, longer than me, not longer than you. Yeah, uh, probably. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I think she's probably been around for like. Was she a nice girl? Is years. she cool? Yeah, she was cool. You know, I mean, but I, that was a while ago we hung out. You know, a lot um, of people jump on a train and they don't even know why they're on the train. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't but know. I, anyways, I don't know why she would talk yeah. shit about you. I never heard anything. Oh, he's rough. Out, whatever. You oh. know. I mean, I heard it a couple times. But anyways, so she was cool. So Julianne, that's a great girl to grow. She was, you know, a, a sexy girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She was, she was great. You know. Yeah. yeah, I saw some girl. You know, I, for sure. Okay. You know, so some girls, I had a really good time off camera as well. Yeah, I mean, sometimes off camera is the most fun. Absolutely. I mean, well, most time. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, you know, for sure, because you don't have to worry about the camera or anybody there. You can just, you know, fuck for two, three, four hours if you want, do whatever you want, you know, like, uh -huh. I mean, just have fun, really be into, you know, one another without anybody telling you, okay, we have enough time, time to come or whatever, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, like you're a slave, right? <laughs> But um, you ever seen the girls dr drugged up, strung out on the set? You know what? A couple times. It did yeah. happen a couple times, yes. And um, you worked, you had to work with her? Yes. I had to work with her a couple times. Uh, it happened where a girl just passed out right before the scene. Wow. Was, I had to cancel the scene. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Everything happens. Shit happens. Yeah. I want to hear it, you know what I mean? Yeah, for People sure. People want to know. Oh, for sure. Hey, listen, <laughs> anything happens, you know? What's the hardest scene you've done and why? I would say probably it has to be, I would say, two hardest scenes. One was in Europe where it was like probably minus 10 Celsius. Um, Probably minus ten Celsius. Yeah. So what is that so, in Fahrenheit? You think? I would say probably maybe ten Fahrenheit. Ten Fahrenheit. Yeah. It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> uh, and um, ten or five Fahrenheit. I'm I'm not too you know, too sure in the exact conversion. Are you buck naked out there, or just had clothes on and just fucking? Uh, I had clothes on, but. Very little clothes. I mean, just jeans and uh, and uh, and a cotton sweater. So it, it was cold. But, but let's make it clear that when you're that cold and you stick your dick in a pussy, oh, it feels good. <laughs> it feels good. But when you do a thrust and you pull out, it's like the cold air and the dick is wet. It's like you feel like the burn on it. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so, it's a weird sensation. And another one was probably on one of the gangbang. Uh, shoots for anabolic where we're in this tire shop and you know I've also been known for being a good anchor you know what I mean I could you know anchor bottom, for a long time. yeah like I mean you know like mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah, an anchor for a DP yes. that's what they say yeah, anchor for, for a DP, DP because yeah, yeah. DPs are difficult a yes. lot of people can't do them especially if you're not on enhancers right and so the bottom usually is the anchor because usually you're smashed down usually right because you know like the girl is on you, then the guy who's on top and everything, you know. I mean, so, yeah, when you're, like, on the bottom of the DP, you know, like, they, they call you the anchor, yeah. you know. So, um, and I was on this, they stuck up a bunch of tires. So I was on a fucking tire um, with a girl on top of me, and, like, my back is, like, sort of sinking in, you know, like, 
because it's just the tires are just the rubber, you know, without the rim. Oh, yeah. So I'm <laughs> sinking <laughs> falling in, there. in. Yeah, falling in. And the girls on top of me, and, and these guys oh, are like, yeah. are like, you know, taking turns on the girl. And I'm trying to keep an edge. Yeah, and I'm trying to keep an edge, and I'm trying to hold the girl and all these guys. And and in a gangbang, there's only two, two, three of us that are pretty much, you know, running, doing the scene. And all the other guys just coming in for 20, 30 seconds, and they go in to move out, and another one gets in for it. And when they get in, they just try to do a thing. They're like, you know, trying to go crazy, like you're saying. And you're like on the bottom trying to hold a girl. Oh, yeah. So that was kind of hard, like, to hang in, you know? Your ass is sinking down, yeah. you're saying. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, yeah. Awesome. that's cool. <laughs> that's a good memory, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Do you ever have a lot of girls that you can remember hearing that, that loved you so much that they were recommending you for work? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah for sure. A lot of times? Yeah, many times, for sure. Cause that's how you get work a lot of times. Yes, and girls, yes. And girls like and the girls you. like you, you know what I mean? That's how you got a lot of work, believe it or not. Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, you know? Then sure. Then you get a different level. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then sometimes you say, I don't want to work with that girl. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> right? For sure. Uh, the next girl, you know what I mean? For sure. Do you have a lot of fans come up to you and say, hey, John, we love you? Uh, I definitely had some fans, yeah. you know, recognize me, some on the street, some like, uh, you know, obviously on and show or, or other conventions, you know, for sure. Uh -huh. What kind of um, people were they? All, all different types? Different types of people, yeah. Uh -huh. And how did it make you feel? Good. It's fun, right? Yeah, Sometimes. of course. Yeah, it's always nice to be, you know, like recognized or knowing that I can, you know, make somebody feel good by them watching my work, you know. You, um, what is your favorite type of girl? The body and look, what is your type? You know, the one that does it for you. I mean, honestly, I like them all. I mean, I, I obviously, you know, I'm an ass man too. I love, I love, you know, a nice. Big or just round? Nice round ass. Yeah. I mean, a little on the bigger side. Not like, you know, nothing like that. You know what I mean? But, I have my company asses. You seen there? <laughs> anyway, it's probably I mean, not. Yeah. I don't think you did oh, anything no, no. We super had... crazy, you know, I mean. Oh, okay. I mean, you we know. We had a lot of big asses, right? Big is good. You know what I mean? I don't like the flat. Bony, you know, I like, you know. Yeah, I don't like flat asses. Yeah, I mean, to me, as long as, you know, the girl's got, like, a nice ass, nice curves. You know, when you watch a girl walk away from you when you get done fucking her, and her ass is flat, or, you know, it's hard to fuck her again sometimes. She's at your house, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, that, oh, I can't yeah. even look, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways. Yeah, I'm with you. Do you ever um, want to be anything else than a porn star? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I already was an engineer. Um, you have an engineering degree? Yes. Okay. Um, but uh, I got some other projects lined up, you know. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm, how can I put it? Porn was my career and it still is. I love it. But I do have other interests in life and other like hobbies and uh, so it's like it's not like my whole life you know what i mean well what do you got you said you've got other things going on what do you got well you know the pipeline real estate what about what type of real estate what do you mean i like to buy Divide? real estate yeah oh, you buy real estate yeah buy uh -huh. real estate buy sell real estate rent real, real estate you know i mean i'm get, getting into that more you have rentals real already estate. or no i do have one yes oh, a house building. It's a commercial. Commercial's it's better, there. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's cool. Uh, so, like a little warehouse. Uh, it's not exactly a warehouse, like a little like office building, like a little. That's cool. I love it, man. That's yeah. a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. I think passive income is awesome. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about what's going to happen with the taxes out here coming up. If they do what they might want to do, right? Then well. you better run. You know what I mean? Three percent, four percent. That's going to be uh, scary. Ugh. Anyways, but that's not this one. So, um, how many girls did you fuck before you got in the business? Before I got in the business, uh, I would say it was probably around maybe 120, 100, some, somewhere around there. So not well, too many. That's it. What do you mean? <laughs> you said 120? Yeah, but I mean, I was already like 28 years old when I got in the business. Uh, it's uh, like, you know, uh, it's not like. Well, okay. But <laughs> well, you want to know what the average man, how many girls the average man has in his lifetime? Because they get married, you know what I mean? Yeah. Probably 10 if they're lucky. Really? I'm going to tell you, man. I ask questions all the time. 
maybe 20 if they're super. No, if they're, you know, if they're a player, that's a different story. But a normal, good-looking guy has five to ten girls normal. If he's a little bit better, maybe 20 girls. Wow. Maybe 50 maximum. Oh, okay. So, so I guess I did good, huh? I thought I was like average. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking guys that are out there hustling, yeah, loving, yeah. crazy yeah. for pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had 100 girls by the time I was 20 years old. See? But I was, you know, a maniac. You know, just right. whatever. You yeah. know, you... You know, we like pussy. Yeah, yeah. You know I, mean? I'm, I was the same. I was a fucking hound dog, man. I try to like fuck it, every pretty girl that I met. You know, pretty much I tried to yeah, fuck her. Right. You know, like, I <laughs> love women. What yeah. the fuck? And it's not a sin. It's a beautiful thing. Absolutely, man. Alpha male, man. Absolutely. So I didn't you have a distribution deal, yes. right? Yes. Was that with? Tell me about it. Well, I had uh, where I I owned my own product. That right. was with uh, Platinum Max and Red Light District. So how did that come about? Um, well, I mean, in the long run, I didn't make much money. With, with, you know, with that, that didn't you know work out to my um, how can I say uh, advantage when it came to money. But I still had a great time working at the company, working with all the people, and uh, I mean, I made money mostly from performing mm -hmm. and directing. But I. So you didn't get a big chunk back I, in your pocket? Yeah, I didn't get a you know like big chunk. What year was that? And who you so you started? Which company you started with first? It was was a red light then platinum or uh, Pla platinum X? I platinum distributed X? pretty much, uh, yeah, but they were like the same company, red light district platinum. Kind X. of, yeah. Yeah, but red light was a big, <clears throat> bigger like flagship. Yes, yes. With more power. Yes. So platinum didn't have the power. As not yes, red not, light. right. So you know, again, it still worked out. I didn't lose money. I'll say that. You didn't make... I didn't... You didn't I, get those paydays. Cause I heard no. stories, you know what I mean? I had Manuel on, right? Yeah. Manuel kicked some ass over there. Yeah. If for a while, yeah. People made a lot of money at, at Red Light for a but, while, but then it started going down there too. You know, so, so were you there with Dion or not? No. No. So that's no. why you didn't make the money. Maybe not. Because when I got, when I got to, together with him, Dion was, was out of Red Light. That's why you didn't make the money. Because when Dion, Dion, you know, yeah, Dion was started. a great salesman. Yeah, he started. Yeah. You know, David didn't start the company. Dion, right? And with the help of Vince, but you know, when you're doing sales, you're doing distribution. Yeah, it's all about the relationships True. and the product. True. But sometimes a pretty box with average material and great relationships supersedes other product. True. So, True. Anyway, True. so you didn't. It wasn't that great, huh? No, it wasn't that great, but at the same time, I still, like I'm saying, I'm, I'm happy I worked there. I had a good time and everything just didn't work out with the ownership deal. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that didn't work out. And uh, I wasn't the only one that it didn't work out for. It didn't work out for a lot of people that were there. And uh, even for people that were there um, with Red Light as well, they did well in the beginning, but then later. When Dion left, so it was much. shit. I guess. Something like that. I guess something like that, whatever, f um, yeah. other factors, whatever, you know what I mean? So, uh -huh. other but yeah, that didn't work out, you know, and then uh, before that I had a deal with Anabolic. Oh, but, yeah? Yeah, but <clears throat> Anabolic, they didn't want to give up ownership, uh -huh. which I think was a big mistake on their part because at one point they used to be the shit. Mm -hmm. And I really took pride and I was really happy that I got to, you know, work there because I was a contract performer and director. Really? So they put you on contract? Well, yeah. I mean, they gave you a deal where I would direct so many. They didn't want you working for other people. So we all worked. For, oh, yeah. What year was that? 2002, 2003. Uh -huh. Okay. So then you... I moved to, uh, when everybody left, Anabolic, everybody went to Red Light and Platinum pretty much. Right. Dion yeah. kind of took everybody. Kind of, yeah. So you didn't, you didn't go on that first train? I didn't go on the first train. Second train? I went, third train. Uh, yeah, I, I left like a year later after everybody else left. Oh, okay. I left a year later. But because I still believed back then that, uh, you know, they're going to take care of me and everything. And, uh, but that didn't happen. And it was a little different distribution deal they gave. They gave, um, after everybody approached them and uh, pretty much had a meeting and said, look, you know, pretty much, you know, we're doing a lot of work. We're doing good, good work for you which we were all trying our best. And one thing I'll tell you, they did give us good budgets to shoot I heard movies. That. Anabolic gave you good budgets. They wanted six scenes <clears throat> in a movie where a lot of people just had five scenes in a the movie. They, they wanted six and high quality and everything. So 
we did our best, good budgets, but we spent a lot of money on the movies. We didn't like try to like you know cut corners to put more money in our pocket, mm -hmm. because the less you spend, the more you have for you. But you know, so it was still a good budget. We made money, but people at Evil Angel, the Red Light started making a lot of money owning their own products. So, you know, everybody wanted to make this amount of money. So, but Anabolic refused to give us ownership. So that's when everybody left. And then, well, they offered this deal. They said, we're going to give you a percentage of, of sales of the movies you direct. So they, they said that yeah, Anabolic. They, yes. They said at the that, end. At the end. Uh-huh. They said they'll give us, let's say, uh, a dollar a tape for everything that, our, let's say, if I direct the line. Mm -hmm. So let's say I have my director's fee, right? Which was 5000 or 7000 Well, they give you a budget. You take yours out then? And then whatever you spend on the move, whatever's left, you keep. So it depends. I mean, usually on a, on a hardcore anal or a DP movie, you would only make two, three grand. Really? Yeah. Wow. On, on like an easier movie where... It, not every scene had to be an anal or a DP, you'd make a little more, you know what I mean? So you still made, you know, a decent amount of money. And plus, when you performed, you made some money too. But... but you, so you're saying really like two to three thousand dollars or three to four thousand was the average? Yeah, per movie that you'd make, that's it. That's it. So a dollar a tape is, would be nice. A dollar a tape would be nice. And because, you know, they used to move a lot of pieces out the door yeah. back then, you know what 5, I mean? Five so, thousand pieces, I yeah, think, right? Yeah, and plus the reorders mm -hmm. and everything. So that would be nice. But then uh, when they did that, you know, a lot of the people didn't really believe that they were going to stick with the deal and everything. And I believed and didn't turn out to be. Oh, really? Yeah. The way it was supposed to be. Let's put it this way. So they didn't honor the deal? No, not, not, not really. I would say that. So, but anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to get into the details and everything of it, but it didn't work out. And, uh, you know, that's, I felt. Pissed off. Yeah, unappreciated and everything, and uh, where the guys that were that were that were working there longer than me, pretty much said that that's probably what's going to happen. You know what I mean? So, but then hmm. at the same time, some things also started happening at Red Light and Platinum X. Mm -hmm. You know where things weren't being honored and done the way they were said they were going to be done. So. I guess it's pretty much most places, uh, unless unless I hear Evil Angel is the only company that consistently, for many many years now, you know, takes care of their uh, people that work for them, and pretty much that's why I have a lot of respect for John John Stagliano, mm -hmm. because he's a man of his word, and uh, you know he has a he believes that people should be rewarded for their good work. It was his idea. Yeah, it was his idea. He was to come up guy. with the yes with the deal with the give people yeah. distribution deals, and he made a lot of people a lot of money. Yes, you know, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I think he's got a reputation of really sticking to his word and honoring uh, his deals and everything, and that's why they're around mm -hmm. for so many years. And I had a deal with Devil's Film, mm -hmm. but that was before it was traded two different times to three different times. And that guy was a wonderful person. He just didn't have many pieces go out the door, but he was a, a man of his word. Mike Rubenstein, mm -hmm. wonderful person. Mm -hmm. Anyways, just on that note. Yeah. But, um, so, so yeah, so you've had a little bit of a rough road on this distribution deal shit, huh? Yeah, yeah. That didn't quite work out, and that was very uh, disappointing and everything and discouraging. And, um, but it is, it is what it is. You... um. Do you have an OnlyFans? Yes. And how does that do? That's doing pretty good, and I'm beginning to uh, put more time and effort into that. Tell everybody what it is, you know? Yeah, it's OnlyFans, John Strong. Please come and uh, join, sign up, and I'm definitely updating it more and uh, throwing up some good content. Yeah, um, check out John Strong on OnlyFans. Yeah. Fans only, OnlyFans? Only fa okay. Yeah, OnlyFans.com <laughs> slash John Strong with two ends. Okay. Yeah. Two ends. Yeah, John with two ends. Yes. Okay. Hear that? All right. So, um, oh, yeah. What perform? What scenes, what awards have you won? I won, I won, I won Performer of the Year. You did? Adam, Adam Film Guide. Oh, Adam not, Film Guide. Uh, you know what? Not AVN. 
I love that Adam Film guy performing here. I won that one too. Yeah. But I like that one because I used to see these guys in there. I say, fuck those motherfuckers. Because I'm smashing these guys. I'm working side by side with them, right? Right. right. And I'm smashing, but they finally gave it to me one year, right? Yeah. And I was, I loved it. It was in yeah. a magazine, of course. Yeah, yeah. Did you get an award? Yeah. I got a magazine only. But yeah, I, I got a magazine. I got, I got an award. So uh, a real award. Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> and they didn't have those then. They just had the magazine. Right, right. Well, that's cool. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. I like that one. You know, I'm just telling you, I like yeah, that one. Yeah, I, I think, honestly, I mean, the... I don't know how they do those things because yeah. I mean it's all political anyway. You know, it's it's halfway political. Yeah, I mean a lot of those companies are all political. Halfway you know, blind. You, right. Exactly. So I mean, uh, from what I was told, that Adam Filgott is more legit than most. Probably halfway biased. It's all crazy. Right. But not not Adam Film World, but the whole. Grading. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's when 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 uh, they gave me that. A lot of people said, "Oh man, you got like one of the real awards or something." I said, well, "Oh, thank you." And, uh, and that's you know, for, for me, performer of the year is the biggest deal because we're in this business to perform. Sure, of course. Not not really so much acting, you know, which is, don't dis, I don't disrespect anybody, but. I agree. You know, but the performer, you know, and people just say, oh, Titi's not a good actor. Yeah. Motherfucker. Yeah, I'm not here. I'm a actor. good actor because I'm not, this is not my, I like my girls brown, you know what I mean? Yes, so yes. I'm a great actor. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah, so. and I, I, I always said, look, I can act, but I'm a way better performer than I am an actor. I always said that, you know, yeah, sure. I've done a lot of features mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? I, I did some acting, but I was never nominated for uh, best actor or whatever, because I'll say that's not my forte. You know I mean? Uh -huh. I was nominated even in AVN a few times for performer of the year. Yeah. A few times. Yeah. yeah. Um, only a few or more than that, right? No, I don't think, I don't think more than that. Really? A few. Yeah. For performer of the year. I mean, I won all other these years awards. only nominated a few. Yeah. Only nominated. Yep. Just like Everhard. Never won performer really? of the year in AVN. Yep. Well, you want to who never won performer of the year? Cool. Which, you know, I mean, Peter North. Really? Come on. See. Peter North. Yeah, I don't know. I guess they have their criteria. I guess that. Peter North. Yeah. You know who won? Jonathan Morgan. Yeah, well. All right, anyways. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I mean, I don't know what criteria they go by, but I know some great performers that should have won, never won. So. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. What other words? Uh, I won like best, I think best, uh, best anal scene, best three way. I mean, bunch. Of, I don't even, you know, honestly, I never really paid attention much. Really? Oh. Um, a lot of sex scenes pretty much. Yeah. A lot of sex scenes. Yes. I never really paid attention much to, uh, to the awards because I honestly, I wasn't in this for the awards. You know, I was in this because I love pussy and you know, if I could, you know, if I could have all the pussy that I wanted <laughs> and make money at it. Yeah, it's a dream. Th to me, yeah, it was a dream. I, I, I didn't care about the awards, you know what I mean? Where some people, they live for the award. But again, to each his own. So that's why I never really paid attention to it. But especially by talking to a lot of different people and realizing how, like you said, biased and political and, and whoever pays for advertisements more or this and that, you know what I mean? It's all a combination of many different things, just like in any business, I guess. I mean, and, you know, Probably. I'm not just singling out like our business, but I mean, it's politics. Much, yeah. It's all politics. Yeah. And we don't want to talk about politics, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's all, yeah, it's all politics. So I'm just saying that's why I never really paid attention to it. As long as like I could do what I love doing, as long as girls like me, as long as directors like me, my performance is good. That's all that mattered to me. But you maybe four or five, six other awards? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, if, you know, like, I mean, I'm on Wikipedia. I mean, people can look it up. I mean, there's a bunch more of than four or five or six? Oh, yeah, or? yeah, for sure. Really? Yeah. Ten? Probably more than that. Really? Yeah. Like, you didn't keep them? You just threw them away? I, I think I have some of them, but they're stashed away in my closet. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> they're not on display or anything. Really? You know what I, mean? yeah. I always displayed mine, man. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'm a vain motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. How do you, how do you see the business today compared to when you first started? Well, I mean, the good thing is, I think it's a lot more accepted now than it used to be. Because even in the 90s, I mean, it was way probably more accepted than it was in the 80s, like you were saying, for sure, the 70s. So every, every decade, I think it's evolving. It was just a little more romantic in the 80s, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But not accepted, but more romantic. Yeah, I mean, where people would probably, you know, like... Porno star! Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think nowadays it's a lot more accepted. It's a lot more talked about openly. 
in you know on 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 TV and mainstream media and everything. So that's a good thing. Um, but I feel a lot of times that they're they've turned porn more into like a a like a factory of just stamping out stuff. And whereas before they were truly porn stars, some girls. Now I think that era is pretty much done. Any girl that does a scene or two now, she calls herself a porn star. And I always said, look, just because you're in porn doesn't make you a porn star. Yeah. There's a big difference. Right. Just like in mainstream movies, there's a lot of actors. Mm -hmm. But there are only like a few A-list like actors that you know if that uh, actor or actress is in a movie, it's it's gonna, you know, like push the movie more and people are gonna buy it more. Same thing in porn. You know, there are porn stars and they're just porn performers. Yeah. And some uh, people got it, some people don't. Yeah, you know, uh, it, with guys or girls, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But nowadays, anybody gets in porn, I'm a porn star, you know? So it's diluted. Yeah, it's, yeah. Do you like it better from before? You know, some things, I like I said, I mean, some things I like better from before, some things I like better from now. Um, you know, you just got to adapt and evolve with times because just times are different and, you know, mm. whereas... Um, now they, you know, they try to focus more on certain things, maybe. Whereas I think it changed a lot too, and I mean, it's a different approach to things. Um, they're shooting a lot more different fetishes and a lot of uh, a lot of things that, that 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 were considered like taboo and people were scared to shoot back then are being shot now because. So it, it's. Is it better for you, or is it just the same? It balances out to the same. I mean. You know, for me, it's pretty much the same as far as, um, you know, I still have a lot of fun working with some girls and then some girls, you know, are, are into it just for the money, not because they really like sex, but I mean, we'll always have that. You yeah. Know? It's just, I feel back in a day we had less, less. way less girls and way less, uh, like girls that were in it strictly for the money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Back then, like, I feel like it was more of like everybody knew each other more and everybody was like glad to be on set more and having a good time. Even if you, even if you had to be on set for a long time, everybody just had a good time, sat around, talk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It wasn't like... More family. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like, oh, I, I got to, you uh -huh. know... I think. No, 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 I'm not saying. I mean, no, no, I'm just no. saying it's like the girls or the guys. Yeah. Oh, I got another scene. Or, well, you know what I mean? It wasn't. They're called clock watchers. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Clock watchers, yeah. hook, hookers, prostitutes, yeah. <laughs> kind of. But um, <laughs> in the 80s, even more of a family. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah. any, maybe every year. But we have to accept the fact that the public, the public's mentality or view. Yeah. Or what they're being taught or. Right. What they see right. is nothing like what it used to be. Yeah. It's okay for a girl to do whatever she wants. Yes. Before, if a girl was a prostitute yeah. or slinging her ass someplace, yeah. Yeah. she was looked upon badly. Now, right. she's, you know, sometimes looked upon prominently. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so it definitely changed. Yeah. I think, you know, it's different trends. They come around. I mean, you know, at one point, all this hardcore stuff was very popular. Then they wanted to shoot more of like, amateur looking stuff like more of the girl next door stuff then the harder stuff's coming around it's always like just with fashion you know like some things come in go out same thing with porn certain things come in and go out and just so I just circle back circle you think? back yeah probably it's like a revolution <laughs> pretty much so you are still working today of course yes and how many scenes you do on average today you know what? It depends. I mean, um, um, a week. On an or, average, yeah. I mean, it depends. I would say I would probably I'm probably doing anywhere between maybe ten to twelve scenes a month. Twelve, 12 scenes. Yeah. A month. So I mean, three or four, three a week. Yeah, on an average, I would say. You know, some week I can do five, and the next week I'll do one or two, and then you know, so it averages out. Let's see. Something like that. And when you first started, you got paid three hundred. Yes. And that was a fair average back then. I guess. I mean, that's when. I mean, huh. I mean, I think. 
some of the top guys yeah, you get know. like about 600 bucks right or like five like, six yeah, five six hundred bucks you know, like, 700 yeah maybe like a couple of people like yourself or whatever would get like the top rate i was yeah. i changed my rate to about seven and 97 or 98 you know right. what i mean so, right yeah so i think right. you were one of the only guys that would get that rate pretty much you know because for those days that was like yeah. like a very high rate yeah, yeah. So but, uh, I think an average guy was probably five hundred, five, six hundred bucks, probably. But, right. But like, let's say something that's psychologically revealing. Yeah. You know, is that when you work on the cheap sets for cheap rates, sometimes more fun. <laughs> you know, it's less pressure. True. And like you don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? True. You don't got to be all perfect. You know. True. True. You get that feeling. Uh, but but then a lot of times, sometimes you get the lesser quality girls as well. But sometimes those lesser looking quality girls make me way hornier. Yes. Way hornier. I agree. <laughs> right? I agree. Yes. Yes. Make you dig hard. You're like, ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're more into it a yeah, lot of, a lot right? of times. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah, it happens. Sure. So sure. I used to have more fun with the cheap sets. Sure. So I sure. think about coming back to work, go to cheap sets and just yeah. fucking forget about it. Yeah, yeah. So for like, you know, I, I worked a little bit for that rate. Then, of course, you know, after a while, I raised my rate little by little, little by little. And then I got to the top rate too. But you got to start somewhere. You know, you can just come in and say, ah, hey, yeah. I want this. They're like, who the fuck are you? You know, and they don't know how you work and everything. You're lucky to just yeah. be able to do what you do. And, and then, you know, you just prove yourself. You know, and once you prove yourself... After, you know, a few months and everything and people a see... A year or two or whatever, yeah. yeah you're consistent and everything. Then you, you can, you know, justify, hey, you know, that's my rate now. And they oh. say, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, you know, he's worth it. Yeah, this guy, yeah, fuck it. You know. I used to do scenes for 125 bucks. Really? And I was so fucking happy. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, you sure. know what I mean? sure. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, I do four or five a day, three or four a day, whatever. And I was like, cute girl. I was like, I don't give a... This oh, is, yeah. I'm making 500 bucks and you pay you green. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 1989, 1990. Oh, I was like, thank hallelujah. God. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh. Anyways, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just a dream for me. But um, what's your rate today? It's, it's high. It's, huh? It's a thousand bucks. Thousand? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good money. Yeah. I mean, if, it'd be better if you're working every day. Do you want to work every day? I mean, yeah, I could work every day. One scene a day, for sure. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to do it. Yeah, I'd yeah, love to that's 30,000. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, not only that, but I mean, I just, I like what I do. Yeah. So that's why, you know, but now there isn't as much work as there used to be back mm -hmm. 15 years ago, you know? Well, the, pu uh, the pussy's pretty. I mean, the girl's sexy. Yes, cute? yes, like I'm cute? not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you have, you know, I mean, the turnover is so yeah. high now because... I guess it's more mainstream now, so there's more and more and more and more uh, girls coming in. Well, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> that is a beautiful thing, you know. <laughs> right. And a lot of them are younger. And the older you get, the more you appreciate the younger girl because you're looking at her, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> now you're old, right? But Yeah, but being able to, like, you know, like, fuck these 18, 19-year-old, 20-year-old girls at our age. Fuck. He's, you know, it's pretty Kinky, amazing. Huh? Kinky, and get paid for it on top of that, uh -huh. you know, because usually guys our age pay for girls like that. Uh -huh. Here, we're getting paid, you know what I mean? So, uh -huh. it's... That seems like, you know, enticing. Yes. You know, let me ask you a question. Because, you know, I, you probably know, I, I went to high levels in the business, right? As mm -hmm. a performer, A, but then I had my company, huge company, mm -hmm. you know, right? Yeah. I asked this out in the open, you know what I mean? You know, my company was, I used to produce 20 movies a month. You know what I mean? For years and years. You know, I have a huge library. Oh, I bet. Right? Yeah. Huge ass. You know, 20 years of producing. You're still making money off of that, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you, when you're at a high level, right? I'm a boss. You know what I mean? I, you know. Right. Big, you know, I right. I'm the only performer to ever distribute a lot and do it, you know, successfully. At the end of the day, I'm the mm -hmm. only guy, you know what I mean? At a level For of. For that long, yeah. The level of the people. Big companies, you know. I put more movies out than Elegant was, than Evil was, and they were selling a lot of pieces. So, you know, I was at the top, right? So I go and say, okay, I'm bored. Let me go back, be a performer. You know what I mean? Do I look like a piece of shit? Because now I'm going to go, you know, I don't have to, but I love the girls and I miss them a little bit. Do, not, I, look, do I look like I'm going down? Not at all. No? I, I would never think that, no. no? Because... It doesn't matter whether, you know, like, I mean, how successful you are, let's say, in your company or whatever, but you love pussy. I so, love performing. I had great and times. performing, yeah. yeah. So it's like you coming in and doing it. You're not doing it for the money, not because you need the money, but because you want to get back to fucking some chicks on camera or whatever and perform. Why not? But then I only, I worked a long time ago. Now I'm older. 
So now you're not, I'm not the same. So then what the fuck happens, right? That's the only I, other... I, you know what? I have a feeling you'll still be quite good. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You kept in great shape. I mean, you look good, you know. I'm pretty... I'm lean. Not yeah, lean. so I think... Got a, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you'll definitely... I'm thinking, well. of, thinking about it. But anyways, so we're almost, we're pretty much at the yeah. end. So in two words, yeah. can you describe your experience in the business in two words? In two words, I would say unbelievably great. That's cool. All right. So I have what celebrity, right? All celebrities of all time, but It'd be better to do the celebrities now because they're, you know, prettier yeah, right, or younger yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Would you want to do a porn movie with? To put her on camera. Uh, a mainstream celebrity? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say definitely Scarlett Johansson is one of them. I yeah, I love her, right? Yeah, she's that so body. sexy and... What would you do me? to her? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Would you tie her up or what? Oh, man. I do a lot, a lot, a lot of dirty things to her, man. Uh, uh, in a good way, though. When I yeah, say dirty, yeah. just to clarify, in a good way, okay? Make her happy. Absolutely. Make her come. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Did, did you focus a lot? Because one of the things I do is always focus on this, this factor. Always trying to make the girls orgasm. Yes. Do you... Did Absolutely. You, yeah. Yeah, because I, I I get off on that more. Like yeah. like I said, the heat rises. Yeah, the energy. You know what I mean? It's like you feel it. Yeah. So it's like, and I feed off that energy, the girl's energy. You know, so if I see she's into it, she's like, you know, it's building and everything. Yeah. It's making me fucking hotter, like more turned on. It makes me want to like fucking just go crazy. Right. You know? it turns you. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So what is your tell the people right out there in the in the world? Some people don't have skills. You know what I mean? They haven't had enough sex. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a lot of sex to understand the way the girl moves. Right. Talks, screams, moans. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It takes only thousands of girls, you know what I mean, to, to know them. Right. But tell the people, what is maybe your best way to make a girl orgasm? Well, my best way, first of all, I try to like feel the girl out because what works for one girl will not work for another girl because everybody has different preferences. Right. So the main thing is you have to vibe with the girl. You have to make her feel comfortable with you. And then you just play it by ear. When you start having sex with her, you can see what turns her on more. You got to pay attention. You know, you, the way you touch her, the way you twist her, the way you fuck her, you can see what she likes more. If you, you just got to pay attention. You know, and one thing to me, it's like a lot of the guys... I would say they rush into things right away, whatever. You got to learn how to read the woman's body and enjoy the woman's body and enjoy the woman. And once you do that, you're going to be able to make a woman feel a lot better. And I think with that, the confidence will go up and the experience will go up and you'll just make a better lover. So pretty much to be real sensitive to her emotions. Absolutely. But any positions... That you think or that you do that makes the girl come easier that you find on average, you know, like she's grinding on you. You put her in doggy style, you're rubbing her clit, anything that's your style. When you're in boxing or when you're in yeah. jujitsu or yeah. wrestling, yeah. you'll go to one move that maybe you make yourself or two moves, you know what I mean? You know, that are special for you. Right. That work better. So. Right. Well, I mean, there are a couple of things. You know, in doggy, usually, you know, like uh, you can feel the girl out. You bring her to, your, to you. Uh, you grab her, you know, like by, by the throat, by the hair. You know, you fuck her hard. You know, you feel her next to you. Usually gets them really going and they come easier that way. Standing, when you pick a girl up and you fuck her and you kiss her and you know, you're looking, looking right in her eyes, you know, it's... It's great too. Uh, a reverse cowgirl. A lot of times you can pound the girl really hard too, and they oh, love yeah. it. You know, they 
They not standing swear. up, but laying down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I down. used to love... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, there's a trick to it. It's not like when you're laying down, when you're, let's say, on a couch or on a bed, your ass is hanging off the bed or the couch and a girl's sitting so that way you can thrust. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because when you're laying on a bed, you can't really thrust much. You can, but you got to make sure she's up a little bit. Right. 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 You know what I mean? So, I mean... If your ass is hanging down, you can really get... You can really, yeah. Leverize it. Yeah. Get in there and, uh, and make the girl squirt and come and everything, so... So that's it? Pretty much. You hear that? That's the way it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, that it works for me. I mean, there's many other things, but I mean, it, it's a theme you could discuss and go on and on oh, and yeah, on. Yeah. And no, I just pretty much a little bit, made yeah. it brief, you know. Is there anything else you want to add to this that I might have forgotten? Um, no, not really. I think we had a good, uh, good session here. And, uh, yeah. you know, thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming. Yeah, for sure. Coming all the way over here and taking your time. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Appreciate well, it. Thank you. Yeah. Nice appreciate to see that. you. Yeah, Always. Always. John Strong, OnlyFans, check it out. Please. Thank you. All right. TT Boy TV, later.